Oh my! I Very ominous. That to the recording. Damn! <laughs> How about that? So, what's it been Damn, like? Oh eight baby. months now? Nine you months? Have a whole baby. <laughs> yeah, year. seriously, a, a whole newborn <laughs> child in this damn time. Be well, a new family member. Welcome back, everybody. To well, the guys, program. I have an announcement. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, welcome back everybody to the uh, Photo Culture Podcast. I know it's been a while, but you know, real life hits us sometimes and we got to <laughs> take care of business, but we're back and better and stronger than ever. So I hope. Yeah, let's hope so. I um, hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, uh, you're your little brother. <laughs> so I, do? I, think I, wanna... I don't think I've gone a day without talking to, like, it feels like every day of my life is a For the Culture Podcast because... <laughs> I the arguments it, it could be 8 a.m. and we're still still going at it so it's you know it's great it's great yeah, but it's recently a- there, there's been like an olive branch I feel like between me and Tom and I'm seeing the light and we'll go we'll go into that oh, later man. in the podcast but. there's never been a lot of middle ground in the past uh, almost year since then I don't like so. it Vinny's slow we put now I think I'm the only inside person <laughs> <laughs> Mark I'm telling like, you I'm bringing everybody outside know. <laughs> I've been outside and uh it's, yeah. You finally got some sun rays. You trying to you fi- figure out what a good tan feels like. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> All right, you know what? Let's just hop right into it then. Um, so there's a lot of new music that dropped this week, a lot of good new music that dropped this week. Um mm-hmm. let's start off the bat with Gunna. Wanna wee. This shit was hot. Mark, I know you were going crazy in the group chat. Oh my. Um, the time of recording this is Saturday, so um, at midnight yesterday, Mark was going crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, Mark, Mark was calling it a classic. Yeah, saying like, it's a classic. At Twelve thirty. <laughs> like, Five tracks one left. Spin. I'm like, all you do here. <laughs> yeah. He said, well, I think I, he made a classic. I uh, I came to this realization. I think I feel the same way about uh, YSL that you guys feel about OVO. Like, I don't think Thug, <laughs> Baby. <laughs> oh, he bounced. He bounced. He Uh-oh. couldn't even get it out. That's how hot his take he, was. He yeah, it was way too spicy. He disrespected OVO, and, and he had Drake him. heard him. Yep. He's an FBI agent. Uh, <laughs> Shot it down. But, yeah, no. It, it, oh, that, I, I don't oh. know. Is Mark texted us. He's back now. And he was already, like, he was crowning it album of the year at that point at 1230 and I, I still there was no explanation he just yeah. said it's album of the year that's it so <laughs> dip <laughs> two days that's, that's that all your explanation <laughs> well I, I don't know like when you listen to a Gunna album you expect like three minute songs that are lyrically nonsense but the beats are great and he gave me 18 songs and 50 minutes of that so why am I gonna mark them down for giving them what I wanted I'm that's very so true happy for you Mark it, 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 it's been the highlight of my quarantine, I'm going to be honest. I, but the I, album work, the album cover work, uh, it kind of stinks. What was that? Is that supposed oh, to be like Genix or something? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Seriously. I Honestly, I, you know what I need? I need a, Vir, uh, what's that guy's name? Vir- Virgil, Virgil Abloh. Abloh. Need him to scam Gunna, so it's. I would like, say, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, the biggest, the biggest finesser alive. Right? I, I like him, but I mean, he's got he's got people fawning at the mouth over like, you know, like I I've talked to Chitty about this guy saw, and he's like he's like it's, it's minimalism though it's min-. I'm like Chitty like I think it looks dope, but like you can't sit here and tell me that he just put a piece of tape over something like that's what happened. <laughs> like, it's it it's it that's it and it listen and it works I'm a sucker time. too. I'm a sucker too, but you can't sit here and tell me it wasn't a master finesse. It's amazing. Yeah. He's at the yeah. top of his game, man. Till Virgil write brick on my brick. You know what I mean? Brick brick. <laughs> like shoelaces say shoelaces. I mean, come that on. shit would be fire too. That's the thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Brick written on a brick of cocaine. <laughs> it's a push out. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a push out. That, that's definitely going to be on his next uh, album cover. Just brick. Oh, yeah. I think Virgil helped design a few of the push album covers back in the day. I wouldn't like be surprised when he first at all. Signed to good, yeah, I'm pretty sure he that did. That makes did. sense. Yeah. I, I feel like was the the Whitney Houston bathroom, which I still stand by as being an awful idea. So bad. Was that <laughs> was that all Kanye? I feel like Virgil. That was Kanye. That. Yeah. I was. I mean, from what I understood, like 
Kanye convinced Push to do it. But it mm. seems very much like a Kanye move. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah, that yeah. was a very Kanye thing to do. And Push was like, all right, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> super villain, put, I guess. Is, yeah, let me, let me just put this album out, please. <laughs> I just want music out there. Yeah. He's like, you're not letting you me do... it out. Yeah. I'm done. He's... But yeah, gonna. I mean, I mean, Mark can't even back it up. So I, yeah. I, I can't. I don't know I, how I, it I is even. What, what do you want me to say about this album that hasn't been said? The beat's great. It's Weird only been nonsense. two days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll say like, this. He's making it like we're talking it. about. He's making it like we're talking about dark fantasy right now. Like, what listen, hasn't been said is, about listen, this? It's listen, like, this is the to pimp a butterfly of Southern 2010s Atlanta trap. I think I just made up a. <laughs> Oh my god! Look, I will say this: it's a pick. You just pick your favorite songs out this album. It's not really like something you're supposed to sit down and listen to, like some concept shit. You know what I mean? Like he he gave he literally just gave us he gave us yeah exactly 18 songs. Most of them are under three minutes. It's like yeah, just pick what you like. Like ain't supposed to be that stressful. That's what I got out of it at least. Yeah, yeah. maybe I just need something mindless to take my mind off of the pandemic that is our world now but oh, a different yeah. and one of the think does that you know what i mean it's a good album mm. top yeah, to bottom. I, I don't think it's like a classic or nothing like that but like he got some shit well, that's gonna stay for sure we need to stop calling things classic like a month after they come out i agree <laughs> like i just i, I it needs to stop it and watch us do that in a minute <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know we are but yeah. um, but and we do it all the time but uh, we need to stop because it's I agree. just like it's like <laughs> I, I don't think like I was I love Daytona. I think it will be a classic, but I don't feel comfortable calling it a classic yet. It's Why? not it's only I, been two years. No, I'm with you there. You know I don't I still like, don't think it is, to be honest. Give me five. Right, okay. I, five years we can start going classic. Like there's certain exceptions. There's certain exceptions you hear and you're like, no, like I remember like Pimp a Butterfly, like the second I heard it, I was like, yeah, that's an all timer. Like that's, there's no question. That's, that's here forever. Like that's, that's a stamp. But other things you got to, you just got like time has to like pass, I feel. And I feel like Push would probably even agree on that front with hip hop. Like it's, it's rare that a thing comes out. It's like instantly classic. And it's also just become slang now. Like classic, you know, it's a classic. You know, <laughs> like, it's just you know like, what really aggravates me? What? Like, like the like ten minutes after an album drops, people keep you know you know the the the, the Kevin Durant and Steph Curry uh, graphic from the NBA Finals where they show their point totals. Yes. And yes. like every time someone drops an album, someone drops that graphic. Like that that album wasn't that good. Not every album can be that good. Yeah. It's, it's like to your point where I I don't know I don't think. So how long do you think? Like ten years, five years? No, I think five, three to five. You, like is when you really can be like, all right, like, yeah, yeah. You can start like there. categorizing it kind of as a classic, and then when it hits like the five year mark, then it's like, okay, okay, official stamp. Yeah, I. You have to be like by the landmark birthday, and then you're like, okay, it's that. Yeah, yeah. it's there. I, yeah. I just like, like, listen. I am one of those people who is very much like, yeah, that is that album will be a classic. Like, we will look at it as a classic. I just, I just think it's so, it's still young. Like, it's still. Not that it's going to change. It's just like I don't feel comfortable calling an album from two years ago a classic yet. Unless it's, you know, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, you know, I can't. Like, it's rare. It's unless rare it's one of. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Unless it's one of. Unless it's one of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One of. <laughs> classic. Album of the year. You heard it here first. Yeah, they can just stop releasing music. Yeah, exactly. They good. Well, they will. They will. The pandemic. I mean, everybody's stopping at this point. There's like nothing coming out. <laughs> Except Drake, isn't he having an album coming out soon? Got yeah. to transition to an album you guys want to talk about. Ooh. Of course. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes. Um, that album, that Dark Lane demo tape. I fucking loved it. It's Two incredible. Thirty Baby yeah. Meet Me by the Bean Cartier Pen. I'm sold. Yeah. Yeah. It's AMG. It's TT. Time flies. Yeah. Two turn. Baby girl, you know me. Yeah. No. Niggas got to respect. Niggas got to accept. Like, I I uh, think the whole tape was it was all Lucy's that were just like would be the best song on everybody else's album. So that's why I was I was like this is this is awesome. This is so much fun, and it's just totally like yeah like 
this half this is out here already. Like if you if your ears to the ground, like it's it's been circulating. So you know, I can make a bag off it now. So stream it. It's like you know, it's it's yeah, it's amazing. I desires still is just like incredible. Um, what else? Time flies. Uh, Florida, Florida with love. love. Florida yep. love is crazy. Um, Florida with love at the club would hit so different. It's yeah. Different. Especially yeah. after COVID, too. I'm back, baby, with a love. Come on. You know that's going to go crazy in the club. That's going to go nuts. It's the, like the, sad Chris. that these songs are getting like, the exposure they really deserve and like the settings they need. Yeah, that is true. What was it? Um, What was the song we were... I know there was one I remember saying to you the night it came out. So I was like, it sucks that we're not like out there right now for this. Like, this would be like the best thing ever if this was out. Was it uh, D4L, maybe? It might have been D4L. I remember D4L was just like, this is insane. Yeah. Like, it sucks that I'm inside right now. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I mean, like, this, like, this song's crazy. <laughs> I feel like especially with this album, this album and the future album as well, I feel yeah. like would have uh, definitely went over a lot better with people overall. Not saying that these are necessarily getting panned. I mean, the Drake tape kind of is, but <clears throat> I think if we were not dealing with this uh, COVID BS, it would definitely be a different situation. Um, I, just, I like. I get why people don't like it because none of these songs are his best song ever. But bro, I these are know, like though. A minuses. You know what everybody I mean? Like, I, everybody, everybody, like A minus for like more music. And then Drake didn't just give us a crumb; he gave us like a whole slice of cake before the actual <laughs> fucking cake in the summer. Exactly. How I feel with Drake, and it's been going into the conversations me and Tom have been having, where I'm slowly going like coming outside and yep. leaving my inside post behind mm-hmm. and it's that like a lot of these kids like will just go on these tirades about how much they hate drake and they won't tell you why they hate him yep. it's j- and it's obviously just because he's popular and then like we make the joke like oh like they're cutting on like this tape at a party and no one's moving but it's true like you see them like post these things and they're like yo this is hot like this is crazy and i'm like yeah it's cool but like like that's better than the drake tape like you know it's it just like people there's people with just like ridiculous opinions on the internet right now and it's yeah, just that's... like and it's like the drake kate i was seeing with had no warrant they're like yeah. he's boring and i'm like what are you talking about <clears throat> this song is crazy like and then like you'll see them like hype up like another artist and you're like yeah okay i guess i mean that's your taste but and then you ask them like why they hate drake and they just go like He's Drake. People like to hate on like mm-hmm. the big ones, you know. Yeah, yeah, people hate when people are up. That's it. Whether it be and sports, he's been up for entertainment, 10 years. you know, actors, anything really. Like, there's always gonna be that backlash. I think people, especially nowadays on the internet, they just want to have that different opinion for being yep. different. I think part of it is because of the kind of cool, eerie kind of vibe you think you're giving off when you do that. And also <laughs> for the likes, too. I think a lot of these people are doing it just because, yeah. like, they think, okay, if I say something ridiculous about Drake, there's enough people who like Drake where they might say something. But there, I don't see it happening there that was this the tape. Like, Hello? For a long time oh, that, like, you had an, a, your opinion was, like, people thought their opinions were higher because – they didn't listen to Drake or they didn't like Drake or they thought, you know, it's too popular. Like who, like it's only made for mass audiences. And I feel like we're at the point, like we've talked about this a lot lately where it's like, I think we're at the point where it's like, you just, you can't deny that he is in the top 10 ever. Like yeah. there's no one who's had a run ever like this ever. Like maybe like, I'm looking at like all genre and I'm like, yeah, he's, he's up there with Michael. Like there's like, I don't think there's a modern artist who could churn out hit after hit after hit and so many at once and keep it going. Like Scorpion had four number one singles on it. It's like his seventh album. That's it was ridiculous. Like, or his fifth album. Like it was just like, it was, it's like, what? Like, yeah. Yeah. And that's nine years. In, that was nine years in too. And yeah. Uh, just yeah. to jump off that as well, like Tusi slide for a lot of people, they consider it kind of like his first real misstep. Bro, if that's your misstep, that's a that's you're still in the lead. You know that's what I mean? Like a billion view misstep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's still a very catchy song. And the song, regardless good. of Every... whether it's like technically advanced or anything, like sometimes oh, you just need good it. music. He made a TikTok song. That's not hip hop. I'm like, all right, all right, definitely, it's Drake, definitely like... not hip hop. And the same kids are the ones like blasting six nine. So yeah, it's exactly. like, <laughs> so you can't even like. It's ridiculous. It's, it's are just. You dumb? stupid or dumb yeah 
<laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah, there's a lot of the, the hip-hop. The Drake hate is, yeah, the Drake hate is just getting tiring. I think at this point, like, if you don't like him, honestly, just, just stop just, bringing it up. Yeah. Like, nobody, <laughs> I can almost guarantee you people are not going to care if you don't like yeah. Drake. I, I honestly would be more interested in somebody giving me a new angle on why Drake is considered, like, the best at some aspect rather than hearing yeah. – 50 million complaints that really don't matter at the end of the day because you're still going to hear them outside. You're still going to hear them wherever you go, whether you're inside or not, really. I think that's been kind of proven throughout the dark lane. Dark lane. Y'all know what the fuck I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> throughout the demo tapes. Um, that I also give you – Still at the top. I'll give you my other take <laughs> of the quarantine that – the internet, like, just decided one day that they don't like Playboy Cardi anymore. That's, like, a thing now. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> that just makes no sense. Like, I hear people being meeting. like, oh, my God. Like, you know, they, like, look what he's doing. And I'm like, first off, he's legitimately only put out three songs, like, officially in the last, like, nine months since we've been gone. And every song you're talking about and criticizing are leaks that aren't from him. They're not supposed to be out there. Like you're not supposed to be even hearing it. So how can you sit here and tell me he fell off or did anything when it, it's not even out? Like, I can't, I, and even the stuff that's out, they're like, oh, like that Drake verse was weird. And I'm like, yeah, but at least the guy like tried something new. Like, I'm like, like yeah. I'd rather you fall flat on your face trying something uh -oh. than recycling everything you have been doing and being boring or just- mad. Honestly, like, like my biggest thing with the Playboy Cardi uh, slander is like, if you didn't like what he's putting out now, then you definitely didn't like what he did yeah. before. Because I don't think it's a dramatic oh. shift or anything. Okay. And most not. The, but uh, like people hated I mean, Meh when it dropped. Like that, this sounds like it could have been on self-titled. Yeah, it it was not like out of left field. It totally was like what I expected. <laughs> was no, like, that <laughs> song was literal trash. I'm sorry. What pain? Nineteen ninety three. I know at me. Or whatever that fucking song was. Like, oh, it was still, terrible. Oh, I mean, it wasn't even English. But it I thought never it was, catchy. was. I thought it was catchy. It never, like, that's the thing. It's like, I keep talking to people. Like, there's only there's one real Cardi fan that I thought who's really Petey. been disappointed. But, like, everyone else I talked to who's trying to tell me a Cardi fell off. I'm like, first off, you never were into them. Yeah. That's one thing. And you hopped on the train as the the whole lot of red hype was coming out because there was a lot of people hopped on that train because it was yep. like it became a meme and then like when the music was not what they like it wasn't this godsend thing that they thought which to us it might have been who were fans but like the people who were just like half in half out they're like i don't get it it's like yeah you never that, that's why you were never really a fan if you didn't get it back then you didn't get it like yeah. that song just like was not it for me i don't know man i i love it i i think it's yeah, great still I, I, on. I thought he was yeah. just having fun with it, to be honest. I thought the video was great. Um, I thought, and especially that kid doing the reaction was incredible. That kid is my kid. Um, yeah, he was, he was just amazing. That kid was hilarious. He was I, I like the song. I think there's a lot. There people are like, oh, Cardi's a liar. And I'm like, no, it's the label. And it's pretty much coming out that it is the label. Like, they're pushing everything back. And they took him off the Young Lena album. So, like, there's, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff going on that people try to pretend like it's not and it is so yeah an artist would not lie to you and just say unless you're Kanye they're not lying to you yes about yes. a release date it's just not yes. happening it just doesn't happen like I'm sorry it just it's not a thing it's the labels like you gotta understand these people are assigned to someone they don't run the show <laughs> like it unless you are unless you are Drake <laughs> Kanye Kendrick to an extent like Jay-Z you're yeah Jay-Z like you have a boss and you have to go to them and be like, I want to do this and they have to approve it. So I and think there's a lot of going on with that on that and with Cardi. Especially when you're kind of a different artist like Cardi, they're going to be a lot more like hesitant on letting you drop stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think that's, that's why he thrives on the leaks and, rather like, than singles. Also being more hesitant now because of corona and they can't like like you said before they can't get the exposure that they want 100 percent. but i feel like that wouldn't apply to cardi like that though you know what i mean just because he's he kind of transcends both sides of the coin i think i'll tell you why it's the festival run you can't go on that is true mm -hmm. that is very true and it, it's just it's just not there right now and I, I think like they went to kalani and they were like 
I think it was inter- I think she's on Interscope, and she was like, "I want to put my album out," and they were like, "Well, if you do it now, we're not giving you a promo budget. Like you're on your own." Wow. And Jeez. she was like, "Word, word." <laughs> and she went and did it. But like, they told the weekend too. They told the weekend. They're like, "We really re- like suggest you don't do this." And he's like, "No, like the fans really want it right now. I'm not going to do that to them." Yeah, yeah. but Chris didn't even start when his album. I think it was started. bubbling. No, it was it was right when the quarantine, the first week. It was probably like a weekend. I yeah. remember. I remember being home for it. He kept the spirits mm. alive in the beginning madness. Yeah. It's he still getting the rotation. Thing. Yeah, because the weekend, uh, yeah, album. that album drop kind of got the ball rolling and everybody else just deciding to drop music again. Um, yeah, that album is incredible, too. And listen, my, my theory, I said weeks ago, too, that the new wave is going to become, for the next few months, is going to be Lucy's being thrown on albums and given to you for to keep you appeased is happening yeah. like cuddy went and dropped a song that was nine years old like <laughs> you know like and i'm not saying it's an offensive thing like Wait, i like the song i like the, song. Yeah. So the, the leaders of the delinquents that was that's nine a, years a, old it's a nine-year-old song what that's song he perfor- that supposed to be on? that was from the indie cut sessions oh my uh, god yeah so like he played it on like that tour so it was <laughs> like you know, like it was all like Jeez. so. A lot of these people are just dropping all this stuff, and I, I have no issue with that. That's cool with me. Yeah. I like that. Like, keep give us something. But Let me, do you think that Migos song is an old one? Which one? Um, the one with Youngblood. No, this is the other one. Yeah, because I think. What were you gonna say? No, I, I agree. I don't think it's old. Yeah, I yeah. don't think it's old. I think that one's new just because um, I was actually looking up some of their stuff on Genius uh, yesterday, and it looks like, I mean, obviously, unofficially, it's being called the quarantine tape uh, that they're going to be dropping soon. So, yeah, it's not going to be Culture 3. They yeah. Change up the name. Yeah, yeah. so um, <laughs> I think, number one, that is a good sign because I feel like usually when you keep going back to a series in music, it usually ends up falling flat at some point. But yeah. I also think it's very clear that they're just hopping in the booth with whoever and just making some fun stuff to hold us over. I mean, the last that two might, they dropped have been perfect, if you ask yeah, me. They've been good. I mean, that's the thing is, I, I think um, this this was probably – did Drake just tweet something? Did he? Drake did. Yeah. Um, Ooh, that's what? rare. Sorry. And that's he deleted rare. the tweet, too. Um, <laughs> okay, but uh, Migos, yeah, I thought that that song – was like the highlight of my week i heard it i was like this is this is migos like this is like 11th grade me like listening to like this is what it felt like i was like yep. it's just such a blast like from the past it was uh yeah it was it was amazing it was amazing the beat buddha bestest beat did it um nba sounds like he should be in the group like yeah. he just complimented <laughs> them so well their raps were all on point <laughs> Quavo sounded energetic. Takeoff sounded like everybody felt like they were young again. Like not that they got old. It's just like they felt like they had that energy of being in Atlanta still, trying to you know really in the trap. It. Yeah, like really yeah. make it into the mainstream. Exactly. Like they were back then. So it um on some nice speakers, and it was everyone was just like. Yeah. So Yeah, it sorry. is a dope track. I think like you said, they brought the energy back. Um I think NBA Youngboy needs some Young Boy never broke again. He needs some more credit <laughs> from people our age and up, man. Cause like we keep hearing all these rumblings from these younger kids saying, like, yo, he's the goat, he's better than Lil Wayne, yada yada yada. I'm starting Wayne. to believe it, bro. I mean, if he's able to I, I really do feel like he just gave these guys the spark of energy they needed to continue on. You know what I mean? Like I don't yeah, know when I, I hear mean, when I, I hear think, the when I hear the chorus, it just sounds like he wrote it and Offset and whoever else was in. The, I think it was Offset, um, who was also on the hook with him, was like, "No, no, 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 no! You you killed that shit. We we gonna need like a couple bars so <laughs> like we keeping up. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I I thought the whole track was dope front to back. The beat is original. Like, damn, these niggas really back, dog. Yeah. I hope so, because no, uh, Taco Tuesday was rough. Yeah, that was really bad. Yeah, that was a rough one. That, that, rough. Sounded like, that one sounded like it was supposed to come out like around NBA playoff time, and they just forgot about it, and it was like an automatic release. And then it dropped, and they're like, oh, oh, shoot, we forgot about this. Like, wait, do we have a song coming it was out? Like, oh, shoot, I forgot about Taco Tuesday. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it yeah. came and went. Yeah. 
I'm kind I don't of think it even did. came. <laughs> it just uh-huh. like appeared, <laughs> and like three people listened. I think it was like the three of us. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. It's so funny. I did, no one even tweeted about it at midnight. I saw it at like at eight thirty on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, so, this came out yesterday. Yeah. Did it? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, for real. Um, that thing stunk, but hey. Very good. Migos, oh, just, they definitely back. I want to circle back to Drake before we put a pin in that. Absolutely. What do you guys make of uh, the tape not going number one? I don't make much of it, to be honest. I mean, like, yeah. I think for a mainstream audience, having a demo tape is just going to off put them off the bat. Because they want the album. They don't really care about, like, yeah. what would be essentially throwaway tracks. And the fact that he was still able to go number two in the world, uh, well, in the country at least, off of what is essentially throwaway tracks, I think yeah. it's still pretty impressive. And also... He's, like, a major, major fan. Like, didn't like that tape. And I was like, I don't understand what the fuck is wrong with you. Like, just because it's not, like, a classic album, which just, like, hit, 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 hit. Like, you have to, like, appreciate like what he delivered yeah exactly there was um you gotta remember though too like he lost by like not a lot and Mm. kenny chesney did a tour bundle so like if you bought a ticket (laughs) he dropped his concert tickets the day the album dropped and then if you bought tickets which we know the people love those country concerts more than more than anything especially in the pandemic How are they, you know, how are they that, selling tickets still? Yeah, Fuck, and then you know what he self. did? Bro, he oh, yeah, sold the right. tickets, and then after they went number one, oh, he no. postponed the tour. <laughs> Genius. Yeah, it was, it was just a ploy. And that's what the country <laughs> artists have been doing. Once they, they do very well on physical sales, but also they do these tour bundles the day the album comes out, and people buy the tickets. And they're not expensive tickets. That's the thing. They're cheap. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. like if, you ever, if you've ever been to like an arena – outdoor arena type show they usually run pretty cheap it's rare to get to catch a rap show in that i've seen one one yeah, i think so like that and yeah. it was cheap but it was yeah you know like those concerts the lawn seats are like nothing mm-hmm. nothing people prefer to be on the lawn yeah so you know and is that here and now is that that kenny chesney is it i don't know uh, I think so because it already dropped to number 38 this week on the charts. Yeah, yeah like, of course. Wow. Geez. Yeah. And Drake is still at number three. So I think that's st- that says a lot about his staying power. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And somehow Nav is currently number one in the country. Oh, well, well, Nav yeah. is. Nav are so fucking funny. It's like <laughs> ridiculous. But with, with like, Nav yeah. is, people like, people like, I don't, they're like, I don't get it. I don't get how he's big. And I, I listen to him and I'm like, I get he's it. He's brown boy that made it. Like, yeah, I exactly. That's just what it is. You just have to respect the hustle. Like and Sometimes the songs are just catchy. Yeah. That's yeah. it. You know? Yeah. I'm a, yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. Back, back, back. Like, that's a classic. It is. That will forever be spun at the club. I don't give a fuck. Him on Turks, fire. I will say, though, the rest of the album is kind of... Eh. Okay. Yeah. What I didn't like. That, See, like Turks, mm. Turks I, did, I wasn't nuts about. I, I, I like the Don Tal of everyone. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it's got songs on it. I, I really <laughs> enjoyed the last one. I really liked that last album. Bad habits. Bad intentions. Yeah, or? yeah, I, I like that a lot. Bad habits was incredible. With tap tap tap. Yeah, and and it had the uh, the one with the weekend. I really like price on my head. Yo, price on my head. Yeah, he had a, he had one of the craziest Fire. thug verses. Flops, whatever. Which one is it? Pregnant pause. It looks like you in the red. <laughs> the Wi-Fi is suffering. Wi-Fi is. Bad at the moment. What'd you say, Rena? Wi Fi. Well, I was going to say while we're waiting um, that Tussin verse by Thug is still one of the craziest Thug verses ever. Oh. Like, just in terms oh, of yeah. content, just disgusting. Um, hold on one he, second. um, Nav, I always will go back to the first Nav tape, the self titled Nav tape. And some way, it's just, it's just one of those songs that still is insane. Just an amazing song. I saw the weekend at Nassau Coliseum on the Starboy tour. Oh, okay. We're having a great time at the show. And 
lo and behold, in his bomber jacket, Nav rises from the ground. <laughs> and I looked at my brother and I was just like, I feel like I'm seeing Jesus appear. <laughs> like, it was just <laughs> amazing. Like, this, this man just rose from the ground and he's just like, <laughs> wait. We go to get a gun, we tell oh, we. Oh, it's just like, and everybody was like, let's go! Oh, it was just amazing. It was, and you know, you know what? Know. I think people just love, like, now I was really a love-hate artist in that sense, man. Like, because... I know. I feel like we would go. At least me and Vinny would go crazy if we saw yeah. Nav live somewhere. Like yeah. I wouldn't give a fuck. Like he could play his worst songs. I'm still going crazy. Oh yeah. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? He's I, like, he's, huh? It's he the, really I, nice. I really do uh, think it's just the hustle, man. Like you can hear the ambition in his music. Because yeah. <laughs> he's not a good rapper. Like I, I'm no, he's not. Shit. He's trying like, his best though. I'll I love his that. and I love like I love a lot of his music, but he, the dude cannot rap to save his life. But he still just puts out solid music all the time. Vinny, I know um, you know this. What mm-hmm. what was the name of the song that he did the hook on for Travis? Oh, uh, I love that. Oh, Beeves in the Trap. Yep. That's Beaves the one. The <laughs> it's very funny that uh, Nob was saying the N word <laughs> until someone told him he couldn't. <laughs> 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 Yo, I love his explanation for it is like very like, valid too. Cause he was like, "Bro, where I'm from, like we just did that. Like it didn't matter. <laughs> we were just like, like, right, like, bro, you're, you're from Canada. <laughs> different rules up there, I guess. You know what I mean? Oh man, what what a guy. Yeah, for real. I mean, uh, uh, speaking of n words. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, oh, boy. I guess it might be time for this. Uh, what's, so, what's up? Hello. I think she said she liked your transition. <laughs> oh, okay, word, yeah. So Doja Cat has been wilding oh, out boy. on the internet lately. Um, she was actually found doing some weird shit in like this video group chat uh, website. She was like talking to racists, laughing at racist <laughs> jokes. Um, allegedly, she said a lot of racist stuff. Also, on camera was caught saying the hard R hard. in a phrase. It looked great. It didn't look great in a room, technically a room full of white people that were definitely Trump supporters. So no, they, it was like an alt right, like 4chan, Facebook, like not Facebook. They were like a 4chan group, like 4chan for anybody that doesn't know 4chan is the scum oh, of the, of the internet. Like that is the worst of the worst people are on 4chan. It's disgusting. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. It's just a horrible, horrible place. So what I don't get is, so at one, when this first broke, I thought, oh, this happened like 2013, 2012. It happened a long time ago. But no, this happened like two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, it's like rap. not even last week. Yeah, they're I thinking it was like last week. I can't wrap my head around. Like Doja Cat had the number one song in the, in the world, right? Yeah. And she's just hanging out with alt-right people <laughs> in, in a group <laughs> chat. <laughs> like That's like if, if Rihanna was hanging out with like, I was just, mm, I probably shouldn't finish that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> we all know where you're going with that. <laughs> <laughs> we all get my joke. Why yeah. is Doja Cat hanging out with the, like people who wanted her to show her titties? Like, I don't know why she playing up to her face. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's different. And my initial thought was it has to be a publicity shunt, right? Like, there's, right. there's no way this is like real. Bad, bad publicity. Not even like when you like plant like a fucking disaster this is like not good yeah it it definitely isn't but like she's also crazy enough to do something like that which is why i was surprised like this is definitely some real shit yucking it up slapping her knee i couldn't believe it (laughs) she was having the time of her life She felt like she was out of cele- Yeah, she was celebrating that number one with like <laughs> MAGA Head 23 <laughs> and the Donald's Godson 16. All Angry these American 45. Oh, yeah. yeah. Open yeah. the country back up 22. <laughs> like there was, there was a lot of people. There. Was- Her burner is just those tweets that tweet uh, after Donald Trump tweets saying how good of a president he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Really. Yo, I mean, eye opening shit, man. And like, I, I don't get it, man. I don't get why you would do some shit like that. And I guess she also had a song called "Did Do Nothing," which I guess is like a phrase used to block, uh, mock police brutality victims. So like, this is getting bad, dude. It's getting Listen, very bad. I, I thought she was just like regular quirky. I didn't realize she was like 
horse girl quirky. No, but I, didn't I had a feeling a horse girl? Quirky. I had a feeling. I definitely had <laughs> Just a feeling. Like a little yeah. racist. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, um, this isn't the first time. There was like multiple things that had happened with her where she like, right. like where they like went to cancel her, and like she said, she said something about the f word yeah and she like made a statement pretty much like being like well like yeah like i said that and then like someone had to go to her and be like no like you really need to like apologize that's not cool and then she made like a a, a real apology statement but it was like she um yeah th- there's this isn't the first time there's been multiple things that have happened with her that have been like very like huh you know so i don't know i mean listen it's like it's weird. Those videos were weird. It was yeah. very odd. It was very mm-hmm. like, you know, because you're seeing like the the clientele in the in the the chats. And you're like, what you, the herbiest herbs I've here? ever seen in my life. I don't get why so like, try to do this when they're like peeking or like about to peek. Yeah, yeah. That was my biggest thing. I was like, dude, what? Like, you didn't think that someone was like recording you in here? Like, you didn't think like. I don't know. Like this is like you get to a certain point where you're like, you need to know. Like, okay, like I probably shouldn't interact with these people anymore. Like, I probably shouldn't be right. doing these things. Exactly. You know, like, like, this is the best. Yeah. You're an international superstar. You got to cut out your alt right friends. That's just the price you pay for fame. Yeah, yeah. It, re- it really is. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's side. Like that's some facts. That's some real shit, Mark. Like, a career guru. <laughs> If you want my honest opinion, though, I, I don't think she's out. Like, I don't think she's done. I think I knowing how these uh, things go. She's done. She's done. You think so? Dude, I, I'm no sorry, way. but, like, as a black man, me seeing – me. What's up? You think she's going to read us try us talking her thing, please. Hello? You think she's going to be fully canceled? Yeah, I, I definitely – so. I, I don't know about fully, but I do think, like – this. There's going to be an aftershock to this just because, like, as a black person, seeing somebody else, another person of color do that to themselves is just, like, and no, almost normalizing it in a way is just not the right, like, energy that we need. I think a lot of people are kind of off-put to that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Oh, I fully agree. I just, like, think canceled culture, like, someone gets canceled for, like, a week. That is then- also true. That's, like, okay. my whole now, let me a, she'll I'm make sorry, a statement ahead, tonight. Man. I'm sorry, she'll make a statement tonight. We'll get a statement on Twitter tonight. I, I can Apple almost, Notes. Yeah, yeah we'll get Apple definitely Notes. notes. Yeah. Are they going to be white or black? Is she dark mode or no? <laughs> she doesn't I like think dark she's mode. Dark. through this. Oh, yeah. She's definitely <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Tom, I have two rebuttals to you. Uh, okay. First, like, in terms of celebrities being in trouble with racial stuff like james charles got caught saying the n-word like five or six times and he's still I literally like stuff. doing really questionable things james charles who the hell is that there was a whole he's a, it's like a makeup youtuber oh wow. and, like, every every six months he has a new n-word scandal and i'm thinking oh this is it for james <laughs> charles and, then, <laughs> and next week he has a, a million retweets about his new makeup line oh. my second point i agree with you i think a lot of Black people and people in color in general will be turned off by Doja Cat's behavior, but how many people of color do you think were listening to yeah. Doja Cat before? Uh, yeah. Approximately 5%. <laughs> yeah. That's a Max. little generous. The, 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 <laughs> yo, the jo- when, I was, when I was screaming about how good I thought she was like a year ago to you guys, it became a joke that she was internet. Like, yeah. that's the thing. Like, it, like that, it was like, oh, this is just some girl Vinny found on the internet who like makes cow songs. You know, so it was like, so like, but, but, you know, like, that's like, I, I don't think, I don't think her, uh, yeah, her fan base is, is, I don't think it'd be phased by it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing. I, that's like the Kanye thing is like the, a lot of people were turned off on Kanye, but like, he still has like that hype beast group still yeah. bonds mm-hmm. over him. And know? now he so has the alt right group. <laughs> Just realistically, like realistically, how many all right people are going to listen to a Kanye West album? I just don't a know. Lot, like, a lot more than you think. That's the thing. Like, I feel like Kanye West is becoming like the almost the scapegoat black guy for them. You know what I mean? Like the safety blanket. Like, oh, Kanye yeah. West said this. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, it's got to be facts. He's like the rap Candace Owens. You know who should well, send dope? <laughs> <laughs> 
You know who Doja Cat or you know who should send Doja Cat a thing of a uh, fruit, a fruit basket, some flowers. Who? Candace Owens. Lana Del Rey. Oh. Came and went once we found out that Doja Cat. <laughs> well, Bro, it was like right on time. CD folks. It's oh, almost as if they, they put out Doja Cat as the sacrificial lamb. Like the label was like, oh, well, Lana's been here for a while. And, you know, she, she does sell a lot of records. So <laughs> let's get another scandal out there. Because, yeah, it was like, off of her. yeah, because it was, it, was, it was Lana. And then all of a sudden, Doja just came in and was like, hold my beer and just took over. But. <laughs> Yeah, this oh, Lana stuff is pretty bad. And just a TLDR for people who don't know, pretty much what happened was she starts out this long uh, note on Instagram with question for the culture. And then she goes <laughs> in, she's like, now that. And she calls out these, uh, these for the most part, incredible singers, women of color, except for one, um, and one that doesn't want to be. For the most but, part. Uh, Doja Cat, Ariana, Camilla, Cardi B, Kaylani, and Nicki Minaj and Beyonce. She calls out all of them for pretty much making, like, sexy, wearing no clothes, fucking cheating, et cetera, kind of music. And she's mad that, I don't know, people, that her music's depressing and people don't fuck with it or something? Is that, is that, that's kind of what, what I got out of it. No, I think she's mad that people criticized her for making that music, but I've never heard anybody criticize her. Maybe they do. rule over her on Tumblr. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. she, had, she had, like, the Tumblr game on lock. <laughs> he was nominated for Album of the Year last year at the yeah, Grammys. Not good, but yeah. Like, she gets critical praise. That's why I was, like, I was confused. Because I was, like, this is weird. Because I didn't know this was a, a talking point with Lana Del Rey. That there was, like, oh, like, yeah. Like, she, she, um, because I think they were talking about a lot about, like, how she'll talk about um, abuse and things like that in her music and she'll like take it from like a, a different perspective type of thing and and people like criticize it. I'm like I've never heard anybody criticize it maybe they do I mean I again like I could be very misinformed on it but I, I I've only seen praise for the last 10 years over Lana Del Rey so that's why I'm like yeah I was surprised I, I really thought I was the only person on earth who didn't vibe with her music to be completely well, honest Mark, like, Mark, really Mark has the vinyls yeah. I don't know what you're talking he's about. Got, he's got the whole yeah. collector's edition, too. You know what I mean? He got the bundle packs with that. Make Listen, sure that's why I have up. a meme up, because I have Born to Die on my back wall behind yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ultraviolet, uh, Born to Die. But Listen, it was a rough day for me the other day, so I'm glad Doja took the heat off a little bit. But she, she really kept did. putting out statements that made everything worse, yeah. too. Yeah, she kept putting she kept putting salt in the wounds. It was like it was like, dude, just stop. Like yeah. just stop talking. Like don't say anything. Like just stop. <laughs> stop. Stop. Like yeah. You should be her Of Lana? Yeah, I, I cuz it was just one of those things I was like, all right, like you said this. It didn't go over well. If I were you, I get with your publicist and your team and you think of a response to calm the fires and be yeah. like, you know, but she just doubled down. Like she was like, no, <laughs> like the culture hasn't like, answered my question. Like, yeah. yeah. Cause it just, it was one of those things that just, it didn't make like her comparison, which is odd. It was just very odd. And was like, huh? Like, yeah, it was just weird. It just sort of felt like bitter in a way. Like, yeah. like, like there's like she's not even in the same lane as these artists if you ask me i feel like she makes completely different music than that's all of these people she called out like you can't be mad at them for making music that is made to be hit music you don't necessarily make music for that you make music that people are supposed to ingest and like really sit down and think about you know what i mean yeah and good too like yeah she's good and the thing thing. is too is like she the fact that she like was naming people and not only naming artists but like the majority of them being women of color too who have definitely had to go through more bs than you have had to in your life just based off of that fact alone i mean it just that that just rubs me the wrong way and the thing is i'm sorry just one more point um even somebody like cardi b like make music about stripper but took the time to listen to her album you would know like Half of her album is her saying, yo, I did this so you don't have to do this shit. You don't got to be a stripper to blow up. Like, that's half of her album. <laughs> like, clearly she wasn't listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, I, 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 do you guys remember when Beyonce did the Black Panther thing? 
oh, after the Super Bowl. Yeah. And Fox News talked about that for six months. <laughs> yeah, there was, there, yeah, there was like you would you would go to like like family parties and like your uncle or like your aunt would be like, that's disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. I'm like, really? <laughs> You know, really? what if Lady Gaga had the clan? Uh, put on? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like like that, just take that part of Beyonce's career. Lana Del Rey has never been criticized that much in her yeah. whole life. Never. <laughs> Bro, I feel like we, like us alone have given Beyonce mo- more heat in her entire career than Lana Del Rey has ever gotten. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that. Oh, Beehive, I never <laughs> said that. Beehive's coming. <laughs> we take that out. I don't want to cut that. <laughs> No, we love Beyonce. We yeah. love Beyonce no Big matter Beyonce what. Punk. Oh, yeah. No matter what Number she one in all our hearts yeah. every single time she releases. No it. matter what. No you matter know what, what the funniest part about all this is? I'm 90% sure this was supposed to be the first step in our album rollout, but no one's talking about the album because she decided to be racist about it. <laughs> She's really oh, what, fitting Lana? that 20s extent. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, she, was, she was teasing new music. It might have been an album. No, <laughs> I, I remember it now. It, she's releasing two spoken word albums. Get the fuck out oh, of here. I listen to that God. bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm not kidding. That, yeah, she is doing that. Yeah. Yeah, she is doing that. Oh, tapping out. See, that's how, you, that's how you know an artist has gotten, like, too big for their own good. You know what I mean? Like, just egotistically. Like, how, like I even get dropping one, but doing a double is – that's a force. Nobody's going to double listen. out. Nobody's <laughs> She's, oh. She made Ready to Die, but like for spoken word <laughs> and like white girls <laughs> by Biggie. Oh, right. <laughs> like I, I, I just, two, so two spoken word albums in a row? Two? That's too much. They're gonna, we're going to know her as a spoken word lady when this all is done. Double Shit. disc. How, how do you complain that you're not at the top of the charts and then <laughs> drop two spoken word albums? <laughs> Nobody likes me because I don't talk uh, about being naked and my big butt and, and my weave. Like, I know you don't, I'm not at the top of the charts because you're, you're doing spoken word poetry over a, an acoustic guitar. Yeah. Hey, it's awesome, it, though. it is fire, though. Sometimes it is. And yeah, Born to <laughs> Die, perfect okay. album. Yeah, I was going to say, more, more, yeah, me. <laughs> more like that. I like the jokes too, man. I, I can play both sides of the court. Yeah, I, f- I feel like I've I've liked a lot of people who have become not prob- well, yeah, problematic, and uh, <laughs> and I've had to deal with a lot of jokes and things like that about them. So it's it's we yeah. all have one. We all have at least one. That's the we thing. We all got one. I got Drake and Young. I think I think I'm embracing Young Boy a little more too now. Uh oh. Yeah, that's oh, that's problematic yeah. city. You know what I mean? It's true. Bro, the that man got nice on Instagram Live and like threatened uh, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, like, that's wild. <laughs> bro, I saw a boxer I, who has never lost a fight. <laughs> bro, like I was floored when he came at Floyd Mayweather like that. I was just like, and good to tell the fifty cent. Yeah, yeah. Oh they yeah. They don't play. They really don't. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Scary stuff. I mean, it was, I was like. Wow, wow! I don't want to mess with this guy. Yeah, you I mean, definitely—he's he's definitely something to mess with. <laughs> he's got no fear. Let me tell you, fear. Me, make easy work of me. Yeah, all of us. Shit, he no. probably like six five, low key too. Knowing him, he probably like one of them NBA niggas. Uh, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, I'm gonna make a rough transition here because um, speaking of artists that we've been loving, Fetty Wap has been trans. Uh, oh. He has been trending. Uh, lately, past like week and a half. I know Vinny is excited. Um, yeah. How about you? Been work let let us in on what's been going on with all this Fetty Wap love. What's happening in the Fetty Wap circle out in Jersey? Out in Jersey? I don't know. I mean, um, well, the thing is, so the other night, all of a sudden, tweets just started coming out from people who were like, yo, remember when Fetty Wap was popping in 2015? Like, life was so good back then. Like, that's so great. And there's a lot of theories that it was a a planned like worship thing by like the label which again like to me people are like oh it was planned and i'm like all right but then it, you all were tweeting about it so it worked so <laughs> yeah, it, it fell into it it worked and then yeah his streams went up like 200 <laughs> percent like good for him yeah it's amazing and was, wasn't he charting at one point i think he might i think he entered back into the spotify and apple music charts jeez yeah 
Dude, I, I had it on last night, and uh, I was playing songs from that that album you made, and uh, I was just like, "Oh my god!" Like I for like these songs are incredible, and we always talk about Fetty. Like it's a weird thing that we always bring them up, like in the group chat. Yeah, and with you know everyone with Brandon and them, and there's always like um, a Fetty Wap. Like once a month at least, there is a day of Fetty Wap. That run was the greatest run I've ever seen in the last five years, like that quickly, you know? Yeah. And it, he he was just such a hit maker, man. And I think, too, is just his shit's already almost five years old. It does not That's feel crazy. like it's been that long. Oh Trap Queen goodness. dropped December 15th, 2014. Yeah, so, cool. like, that's yeah, been I remember a long listening ass to that time. Junior year of high school. Like yeah, senior, that would be was. senior year, yeah. But, mm. like, he, he <clears throat> the fact that those songs still hold that much weight because i feel like you could still play some of these songs people go back oh yeah that's my shit you know what i mean so um i don't know i hope he can kind of be able to capitalize on um this newfound hype again you know what i mean because i feel like yeah i saw a video this morning of him on a uh like an atv or some shit in the middle of the city and he crashed yeah. it so like <laughs> as and like people were getting jokes off like in my head i'm thinking like this is exactly what fetty needs because now he can use this as leverage and be like, "Hey guys, remember me? I got this new song. This is fire." You know what I mean? Yeah. So I hope he's I hope he's able to jump on this opportunity. Cause we need more Fetty. Yeah. We do. Oh, it's he's dope. I I like I was revisiting the album the other day that he put out, and I was like, "This was good. This was really mm. good." What was it called yeah. again? It was um Trap and B, I, right? No, like that. that's a strong title. No, no, no. I think I think it was just called Fetty Wap. No, nah, his the one from 2020. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the Fetty oh, his Wap. old old one. Yeah, the, the okay. debut. I thought you were talking about his new new one because I know he has a new one that's called Trap and B that dropped yes. back in February. I had listened yeah, no, to like you're right, self titled. Yeah, the first yeah, one was self titled. Um, <laughs> that one that was alright, but that self title is different. That shit was different. Yeah, I mean six seven nine. Come on, come on. This one was incredible. Baby girl is so oh, damn yeah. fine though. I want to know if I can hit it from behind though. Behind, though. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. <clears throat> no, I, love, I love my Haitian king, Fetty Wap. I'm glad he's back in the mainstream. If, it, if it's only for a week, then I'll still be happy. But I hope he's here to stay. Did you listen to the single he put out? I did. I liked it. Yeah, me too. I liked it a lot. I haven't no, heard it yet. Too. What's it called? My Pretty Thing or something like that, I think. Pretty thing. Pretty thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Oh, here, I'll give you guys um some I guess a compliment to Drake for free, because I'm in a good mood. His Word. verse on my way, one of my favorites of all time. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's classic. Yeah. Nothing felt to be on Spotify. I don't know why it never officially came out. That never made sense to me. Yeah. Like official in terms of streaming. I don't understand why it was always just a SoundCloud then. Maybe it like I don't even know why. Maybe the label yeah. wouldn't let Drake put it out or something. Who knows? Yeah, they got to pay him. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe they thought yeah. Drake outshone him. I, I don't really don't know. Yeah. I mean, dude, I was like, I didn't even think know of like freshman on. year. Yeah. I think I think of being like end of senior year, freshman year, like with people would just go insane. Yeah. People would lose their shit. I mean, it was like every house party you went to, any like club, like anytime mm. you went outside, like you were hearing that Drake verse, no matter what. <laughs> so I think it's time. I think it's definitely time for us to get that on streaming because they're already starting to put like other stuff back on streaming that weren't there before in the first place. So no. mm. I think this yeah, should be next up. You know what I mean? This was especially. What were you going to say? Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, especially now since there's movement behind Fetty Wap, I feel like it would be the perfect time to put it on streaming. He would yeah. definitely get back on the charts with that. And I think it would be a nice way for him to, like, segue his new music in because it gives you, like, that sense of, like, oh, shit, I forgot about this song. This shit is fire. And then you could be like, oh, wait, Fetty got a new one, too. Let me check that out. So he could definitely use that. I have something to say. What's up? I personally think uh -oh. that he's uh – -oh. I personally think that there's certain artists that aren't necessarily one hit wonders, but like Trap Queen was just his peak. And unless like you're a fan like in that niche, then you might like fuck with him. But like that's it for my boy Fetty. Like, really? Oh no, though. Like there was five, four or five 
massive singles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the only issue is that they all came out way too soon from one another. Like what yeah, should have happened too. is they should've they should have spaced everything out. Yeah. You know, I think he was a victim of his own success in that sense. Like he had too many come out at once and it just made it so hard to maintain the next project. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I don't know. I, I can kind of see where you're coming from with that, but I don't think he's necessarily as niche of an artist as other artists are. Mm-hmm. Will he be able to repeat his success of like Trap Queen, 679, My Way? I don't know about that, but I think especially in a streaming era, like he can find his footing for sure. Yeah. He, I don't think he has any at the moment, you know? Bro, Tyga <laughs> came back. Yeah, that is true. And Tyga was definitely like, in that same bubble as Fetty, where like he had a few hits for a while, went away for a bit, had to like really find himself. But, like now he's it's, Tiger's a staple of the industry, if you ask me. Like if you have a hit, Kid, it's not a hit song unless Tiger's on it. Sometimes you know. We love Kid Cudi, but like Kid Cudi, there was a couple of years where there were a lot of talk that he fell off. He just had a number one single. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> like, his first, his first number his one. First, his yeah, first. Ever. Absolutely. You know, so so it, the comebacks are very possible. Like they're yeah. very. They have especially now, you know? but yeah, especially now because nostalgia is a hell of a drug. Nostalgia oh, is one of those things that just gets people like they'll listen to something, they're like, Oh, those times were so good. I think Fetty was a lot, was that for a lot of people, like, yeah, mm-hmm. it was pre Trump, uh, early college, end of high school for a lot of people. Like, I'm telling you, it was, it yeah. was just like a different time, like, things were like. You know, things were always not amazing. <laughs> like, if you look back, like, there always was issues. But, like, I feel like 2016 and on, like, everything got amplified. Like, because everything became just so, you know. And we we, we were all around it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like the political thing is everywhere now. And hmm. I think before that, there was a lot, like, and now people are worried about a lot more things. And it's just, like, times are rough now. Yeah. So, like, you go back. And you're like, oh, dude, this was so good. This song, like this, this album, this song, this artist, this, these videos. Like, I, I'm now I'm transported back to being at this party, or when I used to go to this place, or these people used to be around. Like, it, it, it gives that to a lot of people. And I think Fetty is is a touchstone for a lot of people. You know where they Most were at definitely. that time. Yeah. Most he, definitely. He was the last big pre-Trump superstar unless i'm missing somebody right um actually it might have been someone over the summer nah Tra- travis scott travis. was like really massive at that That's point true. drake yeah, really became like a and it, like a super duper star right before trump got elected too because that's when hot life bling yeah. popped off around the same time too so that the really views year of, buckle, yeah the bubble. views what a time six month spam was like okay okay yeah. like he's he's a superstar go, go. <laughs> yeah, the greatest ever. Absolutely a goat. Also, to put I'm always back to uh, last year it was Kanye. This year it's Drake. And ne- next year is going to be Denzel Curry. Just watch. Hell Monk no! Over movies. my dead body it will be. But just to put a quick bow on the Fetty Wap thing, do you guys think? I'm going back and forth. But do you think Fetty, at in terms of peak and talent, do you think he was the biggest artist we got when we were at Quinnipiac for no. like, the Giant? No. 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 Oh, for NTS. Was, I'd say I'd say Khalid's Tiesa. Big, but I don't. Yeah. Khalid, I, I, ain't, I, I, Khalid ain't Khalid ain't Fetty big. But I, also I say remember Khalid. Fetty. I was so bad. Like me, and my friends were at Dicks, and everyone came back from Fetty, like bugging that he performed for like five seconds. Yeah. Okay. It was like, just no, no, performance aside. I'm just talking about like how big of a star you were at the time of when the performance was booked. At the I time. S- Fetty I see was where you're coming from. Yeah, I see where you're mm-hmm. coming from with that, Mark. And Dude, I he think... went to Anchi's that night. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> <You> really? <laughs> yeah, I was talking Whoa. to someone who was there. Oh, like they gosh. closed the pad. A, a, a friend of mine's uh, friend. <laughs> I uh, wish was, was she, we were at a graduation party and she was telling a story and she's like, "Yeah, like we were at Anchi's and then they closed the back deck off and Fetty was calling in like women." <laughs> <laughs> like and they were like calling girls in and like he like he had a limo outside like it was mad weird that's <laughs> it's at Angie's. it's like just yeah. a random fucking place but it's like that's where he went after the show that is dope <laughs> that's actually very dope 
Shout yeah. out to Fetty. Fetty got good energy, bro. Yeah, we need him back in 2020. I'm Fuck telling that. you. Fuck that. Haitian we King. Him. For real. Those Haitians are nice. Fetty I agree. <laughs> yeah, no, but Khal- Khalid's, Khalid's massive. Khalid's big. But I, I, I think at the time, though, like, the Fetty hits were just – everywhere mm, yeah like it was still like it was you were going on months of them being out and you couldn't go out and not hear at least two of them mm-hmm. no probably all four of them you were hearing all four, four. you're probably hearing all yeah. four yeah. yeah if i'm going back to that year it was like you always heard trap queen you always heard um what was one of the drake ones uh jump man jump man you, you always, you heard, always heard antidote you always heard all day that was like a big Toad song. All day used to always get played in the downstairs area oh, of Toads. It's like, um, you know what I'm talking about? Save that money. Save There's that money. With oh, Fetty, yeah. Yep. Waffles on that too. Yeah. Yeah. That was also a big song too. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was huge. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think what else was that year that I could think of. Uh, uh, I mean, Alfred. second semester, you could say, uh, Father Stretch My Hands. Yeah. We always, I always go back to when, when Tom starts hating on Kanye. I go, yep. he didn't hate him at the Quinnies when my documentary <laughs> aired and the ending song was Father Stretch My Hands. And he dropped a plate of Chipotle yep. on the theater floor it was when iconic. the song dropped. And you just heard, fuck. <laughs> 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 it was amazing. It, it was, was dope. so funny. Very dope. Yeah, uh, 2015, 2016, good era for music. I will say that. A spicy take. Everybody just always goes back to those, like that, like three years, like 15, 16, 17. Like everybody goes back to those three as like the great, the just like that run of great and music. And then 2020 yeah. pops off. Yeah, it's, it, it's, I feel like this year though is having the, a lot of people are trying to bring back that energy they had. Yep in that in that era like every like drake seems very hungry um i haven't I mean, seen drake this hungry since like his mixtape like yeah. very early drake you know what i mean i mean listen we're even getting kanye again this year yeah he's got a he's got a video and a single dropping on friday i don't so. believe that I, i'm yeah. skipping that i'll believe Definitely it when i see that. it it's one of those things at this point like i'll yeah i'll see when i see it i i'm not like it's just like with him, you don't trust him, but also like, I don't know. Like I keep saying, I think the best move for him right now is just to go away for a little bit. Like just not, not even in like, yo, like you're trash. Like just like, <laughs> I think the best move for him is to go away. Cause all the interviews he did on the Jesus King run was, was so weird because yeah. it was like, I'm born again. I'm good. And then he just start like, sending shots at people and like it's like you're not you didn't change nothing happened like you're just like you're like you're still really bitter and like you're still real like he clearly really hates obama for some reason because he called him the jackass 10 years ago you know like yeah like after the Taylor swift thing he called him jackass wow and um and like there's just like clear like he has like a vitriol towards Democrats and like, it's just like, what is going on? Like, and he just keeps saying he's born again and he's good. And you're, <laughs> the, you're the like, sad, like something's still going on. Like, yeah. Yeah. And the sad thing too, is like, he's exploiting <laughs> these people who have no idea that he's just clearly doing this as a cover up for his emotions and he's just scamming you guys, like scamming these people out of like money and their time, really, with all this bullshit. And I don't know. I, I, I agree with you. I think if he took a year or two off, just really like yeah. actually found himself, I think he could come back with another classic. I know well, we've been he, saying don't throw around that yeah. term, but like he's one of those guys that could do that when he's focused. You know what I mean? I knew I knew something was weird when he did um the flog not show with mm. Cuddy for Kids He Ghost. And he gets on Twitter the next day and he's like, I'm going to push back Yandi to like an indefinite date. And because I want to make a classic and pretty much was saying like the best of me comes when I'm off the meds and when I'm, um, you know, but backs in the corner type of thing. And I think he just in his mind was like, well, if I recreate this scenario in my head of where I was in 2010, like for dark fantasy, I can make dark fantasy again. But now oh. he's, now he's on the run of, 
now his thing is that he tells you that he doesn't like dark fantasy and that power is not a good song and all this like that's his thing now is he's trying to like belittle his old music and saying that the best like you know i agree that he like when he said 808 is probably the best thing he's ever made and i was like yeah like I, i'm with you on that but he's like very much like against like his classics now and being like oh they they the better ones are the ones where that came later after that it's like ah you know like it's clear I, he's just mad he, he's you know yeah that sounds like to me that he uh he's just trying to undermine his value for his older stuff so that like people won't listen to it so that they'll only recognize his new shit so that when he keeps putting out like stuff that isn't as good they won't be like oh it's not dark fantasy though you know yeah, what i mean I, I, I love him it's just he's like he's just one of these he just keeps doing things where i'm like dude yeah why 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 yeah. are you saying this that's what happens i agree i definitely agree i i wish all the best for kai os seriously like as much shit as i've given him over the past <laughs> years like i like it sucks seeing one of your favorite artists go down like this yeah. path that he's clearly gone down it's like you were the dude that was openly criticizing george bush during the hurricane katrina and you yeah. turn around and now you're supporting pretty much this guy on steroids it, it, it's ridiculous to me. i know this isn't a uh political podcast but um yeah. it it's very eye-opening that he's still doing it after all these years yeah. and after yeah. all of these people have talked to him i think it's just who he is at this point yeah i mean i listen i think they like the talk that he only makes sec he, he's only gonna make religious music and i i think that's bs i think we'll hear it's his era he's like van gogh yeah, his, his religious <laughs> era. Yep, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Prince, had, Prince, Prince had one too. That's the thing. They, yeah. they always they go back to the Prince one. People have been going back to that. I'm like, yeah, yeah but I'm fine with yeah. artists making secular music. Just make it good. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah, all I no, ask. Yeah. Like, just make sure it slaps. Yeah. I just felt a little too Jewish to listen to his album. You know, like my mom wouldn't be too happy with mm. me. You won't be able just... to be buried in the cemetery after listening. <laughs> it's like a tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but no, the um with with the Kanye album, I think the, the biggest thing that was like annoyed me was I went to the premiere in September and <laughs> it sounded unfinished. <laughs> it sounded unfinished that night. And then when it came out a month and a half later, it sounded the same. Like nothing <laughs> changed. And I was like, so did he just like not do anything for the last month? Like, he just sit around and, like, tweet? Was that what he was doing? Like, I don't get this. Like, I don't understand what happened. You know, it just sounded so unfinished. It still sounds unfinished because it was. That's been that's been his past, like, four, ever since Life of Pablo, though. That's kind of been his MO yeah. is just dropping something that's unfinished. And then if he feels like it, he's going to, like, add on to it after the fact. But And that was the I, aesthetic of Pablo, too. Like, the aesthetic yeah. of Pablo was, like, rough, on work in progress like and that was clear like from everything about it. it was like this is what this album is like it's, yeah. it's and then you would like, like go to paper the leaks. Machete. yeah like you would go to the leaks that came out like afterwards of like different versions of the songs and you're like oh wow like the highlights had a much bigger like it was much bigger it was more verses it was there was more instrumentation going on and it's clear that he just went in and was like take that out take it out like there was a vision like there clearly was a vision with let me make it sound a little, you know yeah so and it's um uh, it, fuck what was it um yeah i i think that it worked for the life of pablo in that sense like you were saying like it was the aesthetic of that album like i can appreciate that he that wanted was. to try something different especially when like streaming was just popping off and it's like oh i can like add on this is kind of cool like i can keep updating yeah. it but once he's once he did decided that he needed to like add on to stuff on like yay and especially kitsy ghost which i felt like that needed to be a home run and for me it really wasn't um i don't know it just kind of soured me on his whole uh creative process kind of like as i was screaming at the clouds for years um it just felt like he was doing a disservice to his fans that have stuck by his side for almost 20 years now yeah this this was the one for me where i felt like i was like I was like, oh, he really doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, okay. Like, I was like, like, okay, I get it. I get it now. I yeah. get it. Like, I remember talk, like, texting you, like, you guys are being like, I get it. Like, I yeah. totally get it now. 
Like I yeah. get what you've been saying for years. Like it's it, clear. It yeah, sounds, so. it seems crazy in the moment too, but like it, it's just one of those things where like you can kind of, sometimes you can tell when an artist has like a clear passion or a clear vision or even just like wants to do it. And it just felt like Kanye was only doing it to prove a point and not because of the love for it. And obviously I don't want to speak for what's going on in his head, but that's just how it sounds know, like I to me. He's like genuinely passionate. Like he gets like so crazy about things. Like it's not even about the money anymore. Like he just literally is doing whatever the fuck he wants because he reached that like level of fame. Or he's just going to see how, like, people just, like, ride the fucking crazy train with him because he and, fucking can. And I think that's what he's doing. I think he's trying to see what he can get away with. You know what I mean? Before <laughs> it's too late. And, and, again, more power to him. Mm-hmm. Like, he has the ability to do that. That's just not my vibe, you know? Hmm. Let me ask you guys a question. Uh, do you think that an artist can drop their best work when they're at their most famous? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm leaning towards right. no, because I can't really? think of an example of an artist that's put out there. I, I, I can't think of an artist that hit their peak when they're at the peak of their popularity, Mark, like, in give, terms of their best work. I'll give you one right now, Kanye West. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, I, I think... I, I'd, put, I'd push back on that. I feel like the, the Kanye West stock was down when my beautiful dark twisted fans had dropped. The, but not with the drop... fans, though. Yeah, that's that, the thing. Well, with like the fans loved people. them still. Yeah. Well, no, I mean like in pop. When I say popularity, I just mean in like by the general masses. Kanye was not embraced like by image. the general masses. Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. But yeah, but Mark, graduation also. But I wouldn't say graduation is his best word. But at the time, I think a lot of people were like, "This is his best thing." Yeah. Yeah, but then he continued though. No, absolutely. But I think he kept doing that. Like I kept. I think he kept putting out his best work. As he kept um, going and his popularity um, kept going, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, and then once, you know, okay. then after throwing, not throwing, after fantasy, you know, that's where a lot of the debate starts. With yeah. People. Yeah. But, definitely. Um, where I'm on the side where I, I think the worst one came now. Like it just happened to me. Yeah. I, I'm the, yeah. still a defender of Yay. No, I, I, I'd argue that from uh, fantasy until. I, I throw Life of Pablo in there. Those are all good albums, but I don't think any of them reach the peak. Of, you can say they're equal, but I don't think they eclipse uh, uh, Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy in quality. Definitely not. But maybe no. that's just me. I don't know. No, I think maybe. that's that's like the general consensus, I would say, to be honest. like I'm, I feel like I'm an outlier in the whole I don't like Yeezus debate. Um, <laughs> but I, I feel like the general consensus is up until Pablo, Kanye was – untouchable and yeah, then yeah and then after mm-hmm. that you can start really like having a serious debate about it but i would only say my beautiful dark twisted fantasy is like his apex moment for when he was at his pop highest popularity because before the taylor swift incident he was like the rap superstar the rock star you know what i mean mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah. after that he was still that guy but now he had more eyes on him even though it wasn't necessarily yeah. the eyes that he may have wanted on him, he still had more eyes on him now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that definitely plays okay. well. Yeah, I agree. I think, yeah, with the controversy, it definitely had the world was watching. Yeah. I think movie. everyone wanted like, him to fail. I see what you mean. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And he hit it out the fucking park. It was like, that he did. And I think Kanye is kind of yeah. an exception to that rule too, though. Because, like, who else really has done that? Like, maybe Future? I, mean, I don't think he's don't made the like level. The but I'm level just saying in terms of his of, best his best album when he's at his most popular. Yeah. All right. Oh, let, yeah. Let, me throw, let me throw an interesting one at you guys. Drake, do you think what he's putting out now matches um, Take Care? Yeah. yeah. I would say. I think he's putting out, it, I think he's putting some of the best work of his career. Right? Yeah. Really? It's up there. I don't think to the masses it's hitting as well at the moment. I the, the weird thing with Drake lately is he's kind of giving us like this post Maloney vibe where like people aren't really appreciating the work until after the fact, yeah. which is really, really interesting to me. But I would say personally, his most popular, he was at his peak during Views, I would say. And I don't think Views is his best album. I think Views, when people think of peak Drake, they think of Views. I was going to say Views was his peak. I don't think that's his best. Yeah, exactly. Like, just in well, terms I, of notoriety. Because, like, yeah. once Hotline Bling – because, like, he had hits, like, just hold on, we're going home, shit like that. But, like, once Hotline Bling came out, 
that's when like your grandma started listening, started singing Drake. You know what I mean? <laughs> like every, it was unavoidable. Yeah, like he was yeah. everywhere. You saw the dance everywhere. People had the sweaters on for Christmas. Like, dude, they had Trump it a, doing it on Saturday Night Live. Exactly. Like they, it was everywhere. So I just think that Drake is an, is a perfect example of actually not being at your peak musically, but being at your maybe being at your peak in terms of just notoriety and popularity. Yeah. Because I do think now he's kind of not necessarily. I'd say he's plateauing because there's nowhere else to go because he's already at the top, you know? It's, all, it's right, like he's just creating – he's creating, like, new benchmarks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Right, and my, it's my, dope. I was thinking – the re- I'm sorry. Go ahead, Vinny. No, I, I think that he'll – I think this next album is going to be the one that people collectively all are like, okay. I agree. Yep, this is the one. Like, I, I think this is the one coming. Really? Just from, just from the way things sound. Yeah. Hmm. Or it could be like his first floppity flop. It really I don't could. Think it'll, I think he's too big to flop. He's too big to fail at this point. And the thing I is, too, is I'm pretty sure he's like completely independent now. Yeah, Frozen That's Moments, LLC. Frozen Moments, yeah. And then he probably is just going to, it looks like he's doing a distribution deal with the Republic. So, no. um, I mean, he's got like pretty much all the power now. And I think when you're at the top, you're like, Maybe he is at his top now, though. That's the thing. Like, I think we're still seeing peak Drake. So it's kind of hard to decipher, like, that argument now that I think about it. But you see, um, yeah. I was going to say, I'm, going, I'm sorry. I keep cutting no, no. Off. Go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I think that this album right here, he knows it has to be it because there's been so much debate over his past music, whether or not he's had the classic album, has really been the talk of the hip hop landscape for the past few years, ever since Scorpion Drop, I would say. So. I think he knows he has to knock it out the park with this. I think that, again, the demo tapes is really like an appetizer to the full course, four course meal that's going to be whatever he drops in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And the fact that 2C Slide is on the throwaway tape. Yeah. Tells me that there's a, nu- there's a bigger hit in his pocket. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which is like, it's wild to think that he could just do that. And the crazy so. thing is, too, is like, although he did put a lot of the, um, the unreleased music onto this demo tape. He still has a lot of snippets from those IG uh, live clips that he was doing that haven't been released yet. That oh yeah, fire! So, Grease, bro. The Grease yeah. song is, and I heard that's going. It's not even on the album. I heard it's going. I heard Khaled got it. Really? On his album. That's why. That's what I've heard. Yeah. So that's insane. Yeah, and he's he's doing like a, a French like accent on it too. It's amazing. Oh, it's yeah. so good. Boy. That's but, fire. Yeah. He's being innovative, like he's trying new things. I love what I'm get what we're getting from Drake lately, to be honest. I yeah. I don't get why people hate him. It's, it's his year, man. Really it's dope. Drake's year. It is. It's OVO's it's year. year. It's it and speaking of OVO, OVO, um, since they're the same shit, according to a Drake, free band OVO is the same shit. Uh yes. future. Number one album. He went number yeah, one. You- Future yeah. 100, 170 to 185 is what is what's being recorded for first week sales. Oh, and he's how many years in <laughs> yeah. now? Yeah, yeah. No, and he's he's been in, he's been in the game as long as Drake. Yeah, easily yeah. as long as Drake. So that's, has he ever done numbers like that? He had to have. I don't know. I don't remember this much hype for a future album. Future got that it. toxic energy, and I love it. Yes, yes, he does. I'm gonna look when up he said, if he's gotten a bigger when release, he was doing those so. tweets well, that day. Tweeting, <laughs> Uh, tweeting that baby mama <laughs> we're, in for, we're in for a wild album what was the baby mama right. tweets and then he just started saying like she belongs to the streets and stuff and that's yeah. what well, the streets pay her tap I remember texting you guys I was like it's over I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Gonna, <laughs> gonna, tweeting his mama. greatest hits <laughs> yeah I was like this is gonna be insane <laughs> I think this is his biggest release it is uh, Dirty Sprite 2 sold 151 in the first week and this is up around 175. I don't think anything has gotten close since then. So, no. um, that is super impressive. And honestly, I think this album is some of his best work yet. I think this is his best work since his self-titled album. Yeah, I was going to say, and I, I know I can't speak for myself or, or Vinny rather, but I know Tom and I, we're not like really big future people. But no, I did like this. He knocked it out the fucking park. Absolutely Hendrix? knocked out the park. Hendrix, that album was fantastic. That was the one that came out the week after Future. Yeah. After the subtitle one. Yeah. That was like a one-two punch that was just amazing. I remember those two weeks were just so much fun. Yeah. Mm. And he was he was just yeah. everywhere. People would just love him. Yeah. Like, we were just openly playing just toxic and um, 
you know, in some ways, uh, mentally depressing music, but that's just slap, bro. So we didn't give a fuck. I think the next step is to really go full on r and <laughs> I think that's the next step. Yeah, he's gonna. Yeah. I think, because, yeah. like, yeah, I've been hearing a lot, like too, it. like, older people kind of like his R&B stuff more than his trap music anyways. So, like, I, I feel Hendrix, like that could be an easy transition for him. Hendrix was such a good album. Like, that's why I keep, I go back to Hendrix all the time, and I'm like, really? I, I want him to do this again. Like, I want him to make this album, like, not this exact album, but I want him on this vibe again. Like, this yeah. is so good, you know? Yeah, definitely revisit it. It's, it's I'm, I'm going to have to, because I remember I was crazy. a huge fan of it at that time. But Yeah, I couldn't get into it either. Yeah. I did like the the weekend song, though, still coming out strong. That coming out fire. strong. Yeah, that was he. <laughs> um, I did like on this new tape, though, that he he really didn't, like, try to squeeze in the singles into the album. He just threw them all in at the end. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to give y'all. He's like, I'm going to give y'all the album and then the shit y'all know. We can listen at the end and give me some more strings. And I, I don't know. I just thought that I'd rather – that that's transparency to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's not trying to fuck yeah, with us or anything. That, yeah. He's just letting us know off rip. Like, I'm going number one with this motherfucker. I'm putting these songs on. You already like these songs, so it's cool. I, if, yeah. Hendrix, say less. Like, <laughs> rocking with it. Damn. I and life is – Life is Good was the last great um, pre-corona that we outside got. song. Yep. Yeah. It's the last one. Yeah. Thank Working God he came like out. Usual. Like, I, 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 I go back to, like, being at, like, that weekend that song came out and being at my friend's house. He was having, like, this big pregame on a Saturday night. And that, when the beat switched, everyone was just so, like, I'm like, this is this is amazing, and then like I I keep thinking of that during all this because I'm like, damn, I miss that, <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it was like because like that was the and I'm like that was probably the last major like song to come out before all this went down. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, and he's got more songs like that on this album. I think would go crazy just outside in general, like posted with demons. Um, oh yeah, the Travis Scott song was cool. Um, I, Harlem Shake with nuts. <laughs> you didn't like the Travis Scott one? Listen, I'm dumping all my Travis Scott stock. That, that, that boy stings, man. I think I he's done. I, I think he's done for. He's popping up on Fortnite and, <laughs> yeah. like, 2K. What's nice? He's going to be on GTA. Like, I feel like the, once Call you get of the Duty Fortnite Warzone. bag, like, it's yeah. like dancing with the stars, man. You're, you're cooked. For real. It, it's ridiculous. And – he had another feature on on Gunna's album. And it was just oh. like he was there. Like, yeah, would have been a better song without him. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, Solitaire really might be his only good feature in a while. I'm curious to see um, what the next move is on his part. I'm wow, where curious. does he go? I, That's taking a break yeah. a little until post Corona. Yeah, I, I like. I just it's just nothing. Is like he just sounds zoned out yeah like bored very bored like uh, Quavo two years ago just talk about how Drake called Kylie Jenner a fucking side piece oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo the reader report boop, boop, boop. and that was that was a three-year-old leak too yeah. like that was like so that was like something that was just three. Like leaked. Oh, let me do the math on that it was three, on yeah. it was three years old 2017 oh get him in trouble it could Definitely could. I don't know. Uh, I thought it was funny as shit, to be honest, when I heard that. Well, he apologized before the outrage even hit. Like, it was when it, before <laughs> everybody woke up. Like, there was – you saw, like, tweets like, yo, Drake said this on a song, and the next tweet was, Drake apologized. <laughs> so, it's like, <laughs> so it's like, oh, okay. You know, but – and he, like, made sure he's like, – he's like, I don't want my friends to wake up and feel offended. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. He did a mad early, too. Like, props to him. He was on that. Quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he hit oh, yeah. it. On that damage control because he knew the mistake he fucking made. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could tell he was never, like, he never thought that song was ever going to come out. Like, ever. But, like, he was on the stream when it played. Was he really? <laughs> I just I just think he was drunk. I think that's what happened. Like, I think they were, like, they go on these OVO Night Owl streams they do, like, every week. And he'll, like, start playing old. They'll go into the vault and start playing old songs. And... Yeah, like he like he's like smoking hookah and like oh, drinking and the like all his yep. friends. Yeah, and like they're just like throwing music on, you know. Yeah, he's just vibing. But, I, I'm waiting for him to drop the Pusha T diss track. I'm waiting for that. You know, it's gonna come one night when he's too saucy. 
You know, no, but he keeps saying he has no interest. He keeps saying in everything. He's like, when he gets asked, they're like, do you ever want to like make amends? Do you ever want to do this? He's like, no, I got no interest. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. like, there's no need. <laughs> you know, I, mean, so, I think he proved it with Scorpion, like in yeah. the same way where like, it, cause the Pusha T beef literally just reminded me so much of the Nas and Jay-Z beef. It's like thinking back now, it literally it got spinning image. It's spinning image. Yeah. Like, you got him in the moment, but as soon as he drops another album, people just completely forgot about it like, yeah. or just didn't care anymore, you know? Yeah. And he's still making the biggest music in the world. Yeah. I mean, and like when you look back at like what Push said and what Kanye was doing, oh. you're like, you, you kind of, you look and you're like, all right, I can see why he probably would never want to speak to these people. Again. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like no matter like as much as we love those songs, like yeah. you could see him being like, I don't think, it'd be beneficial for us to sit down. <laughs> like, exactly. It, it, we, it yeah. wouldn't end well. Definitely wouldn't end well. <laughs> yeah. Well, he said, didn't he say, like, he'd be, like, if he saw him, like, it wouldn't be good. Like, they would probably get into a fight. Like, there was something he said. Probably. I mean, I didn't hear nothing, but I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if he had. Um, yeah. Just because, I, I mean, I get it. Like, you you looked up to these guys for so long, and then they're just going to turn right around and just – Try to sabotage you <laughs> literally yeah. every single corner because yeah. it's not it's not cool. Yeah. Like when you look back, you're like, yeah, it wasn't really cool what, he, what they did to him. Like, yeah, because you really look and you're like, oh, so like Kanye was doing this, and like Push is not really like Push. I won't like Push was just involved through like the the Wayne beef. Yeah, and kind of relayed into, but Kanye real like you could see why he was so fixated on coming at Kanye because to him he felt as if he's like dude i'm just betrayed like there's like he's like you're supposed to be like my mentor and all you do is is like cut me like you yeah. always try to screw me and it's like and like when you really look at it you're like yeah but like, there's been a lot of times where kanye like really sneakily did things to drake and yeah. drake just to kind of let it go you know so now he's just like ah oh. he's like you know what no yeah look but, like us being like us, you know yeah but speaking of Drake, he did say he wants to work with the future goat, Baby Keem. Yes. So that's yeah, coming. So I think. Oh, you don't like him? You don't like him? Uh, I can't. You don't I like can't do it. Really? Mm. Wait. You know, I'll listen, go back and give him a spin. But. Definitely listen to or Orange Soda. I think. Yeah. If you don't like Orange Soda, you probably won't like him at all. But okay. That song. Better. That's like his safest. Like. <laughs> that's like the intro to the rest of his shit you know what i mean and okay it, it's definitely an acquired taste a little bit because i remember uh a friend of the program joe DeRosa, had showed me orange soda like way before it blew up i was like what the fuck is this shit but then i went back to it like <laughs> two three weeks later i was like okay nah this is it so, it's hard yeah it's, it's hard crazy. He, he's yeah. good and he's kendrick's cousin man so it's like you kind of yeah. have to Wait, 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 wait. Say less. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah yeah exactly like, yeah. put that yeah. shit up on the key mark yeah <laughs> it's and Carlos. Like, Cardo is one of the people that have, like found him. The Cardo got wings. The really, producer? dude. Cardo yeah, is and Cardo found him. Legend, dude. Yeah, Cardo's amazing, and he produces like most of Keem's stuff. And Keem, like Keem, is a big writer. Like he wrote on the Beyonce Lion King album. He wrote wow. um, on the Redemption Kendrick album. He wrote on the Black Panther album. So like he's, jeez, he's been around. On for a little bit yeah he's great he's amazing he, he's he's probably my my favorite like up and coming like who i have stock in going like yeah he's he's up next like he's the one yeah. he's the one to watch like he's yeah. gonna be a massive star you know so i agree i definitely yeah. agree with that yeah he's amazing he's so good like he really he is. said he said his he has a new tape coming out very soon he like tweeted something like it's coming so let's hope that if the drake feature is on that he's definitely gonna blow up well, Drake was, like, one of the first ma – like, Drake and Kendrick were, like – Drake, Kendrick, and Cardo, like, the three first big people to come out and be, like, yo, we love this kid. Because Kendrick was, like – you know, like, he had – Kendrick had him working on all these projects that Kendrick was involved in. Yeah. And then Cardo was producing everything for him. And then Drake in the – um in the uh, the title interview from last Christmas. He even said, before said, that. Yeah. Oh, even before that, too. But I remember Drake in to, the title – wait, what? Uh, before you bring up the title thing, because he had went to – um. Well, a baby Keem concert in Toronto. Oh, really? <laughs> Way before, yeah. He he just showed up and started going crazy at the concert. Like he was in the yeah. back. He was in the back going nuts. Like there was a video of him like 
going yeah. crazy to his music while like the crowd was going nuts to the crowd. But like, um, and like he didn't want to go out because he wanted Baby Keem to have his moment. But yeah, I mean, he's been on him early, early. Wait, yeah, what about they, what are your opinions on him? Who? Who? Chef G. Who? Chef G. Oh my God. Thank yeah, you. Chef G is nice. Thank you, Rita. Chef. He's the future of New York. And that is a perfect transition to just talk about New York in general. Um, Chef G is a fucking beast. Let, let's put that out there. Let's lay that out there first. Um, not only is he just like a voice of the streets, but he's kind of like what I would like to say is kind of picking up where Pop Smoke left off without taking his sound. You know what I mean? Facts. And I don't know. I just feel like the energy he's bringing is just like, it's just what New York needs right now. They need that sort of aggressive, like street, you know, real, authentic, just I'm me. This is what we do. We get lit and we go crazy. And I make fire music. Yeah, but if you want my honest opinion, I think that the, the, the heir to the New York throne, who should have been the king by now, but I think has just had some issues in the last few years getting there, um, because of the fandom, as we've talked about before, is Joey. And I think Joey yeah. is coming. Mm. And it's oh, going to be crazy. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think that Joey is coming. There's rumors going around that a bar-heavy surprise album is coming out Friday. So a lot of so. people think it's him or, or Sean. You know, Either so. one I'll be more than yeah, happy Sean? with. Yeah. yeah. But it'll be Detroit, too. I don't know. Have you ever... Detroit, too. Mark, have yeah. you ever listened to Detroit? Uh, is that his first album or is that a mixtape? It's a mixtape. I don't think I've listened to it. You should go back and listen to it because it's one of the best mixtapes, period. Yeah. Like, period. That, that I is used it Big Shawnee, though? No. Like, is it... It's not, not like puns. it's not like the punny, like corny, pop rap shit. Like it's super, like introspective. It, it's called Detroit. Okay. It's about his city. Like it's about where he comes from. So like, I respect that. It's really oh, dope. It, that album. I mean, that mixtape is what won me over. Because I used to think the same thing. Like, oh, he's a corny rapper. He just makes pop music, whatever. But yeah. he, he's got some skills, man. And I think if okay. it's Detroit too, it's gonna be something big. But if it's Joey. I, yeah. He's going he's gonna to take the world by storm, especially at a time like now, yeah. because, like, bro, I think Joey's music kind of fits being inside to a degree, because, like, yep. a lot of his stuff you do have to sit down and really, like, ingest and think about. And I don't know. I just feel like this is the perfect time for him to strike. He's got a lot of pedigree. The writing credits, we talk about it all the time, man. But, like, yeah. it's his time. It's been – it's almost been three years. It has been three years. It's been three. No. It's been three years. So you know I it's going to be, be some. I think it's going to be a classic. I do. I think it's going to be a classic. Because I, I, I think a big hump of Joey's issue was we always talk about the toxic pro-era fans. Like, they're yeah. very toxic. Mm -hmm. They are very – they don't want change. They just want boom bap. <laughs> and yep. the second he tried to, like, explore and had success doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they freaked out. So he had to, like, scale back and not go full on. That was my biggest issue with that last album was that it just felt like – he went forward and then had to go back. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it, it, was, it was sad. It, it was, was just sad. It was still a good album, but, yeah, I do agree. Do you guys think that he's going to just say fuck it and go all in on whatever he wants, or do you think he's still going to have to cater to those pro-era fans? I feel like he has nothing to lose at this point, so I feel like he's going to go all in, and whoever comes with him on the ride comes with him. And yeah. If they want to say fuck him, then they fuck him. Yeah, but I agree. Yeah. I hope so, at least. It's time for him to go outside. I think that's really what it is. Yeah. He's been inside way too long. I feel like people who don't know about him really would love him just because he can do almost anything. He can hop on any beat and kill it. I think he's pretty he can make an outside hit, though? Yeah. He bro, did. He wrote, he wrote Rockstar. Yeah, he wrote Rockstar. Yeah, but, like, I don't know. Do you think this Rockstar would have been a hit if it was him? I mean, yeah, I think regardless, it would have been. I see, like, I know he got cut off of it, but he wrote the hook, too. No, no, no. I think he yeah. has a great pen. It's a great year for hits, but I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking. But. If he was established no, more and he put that out, yeah, it'd be a hit. I think yeah. it's also got to remember that, like, if Pulse Alone, like, just, like, I don't think Pulse Alone would have blown up off that song. Like, that probably would have been, like, you're right, you're right. you know what I'm saying? Like, I think, mm -hmm. like, that's a, that's a established artist hit yeah. type of deal. You know, you know, like you had your breakout. I think Devastated would have been a big, bigger hit if he was a bigger artist. I think that Absolutely. Would have been a more outside. More sure, for sure. Absolutely. Like, it, 
like if he was where Logic was, you know what I mean? Because remember how he went on tour with Logic that year? He opened up for him. Like in yeah. all seriousness, even if he was just as popular as he was, I think that would have been like top ten instead of being like wherever it fell. But it was still a great song, and I do think it is a great sign for him in the future because he can Like I just don't get why he doesn't just do that. You know what I mean? Just yeah, hop on whatever you feel like, bro. Because the people who really fuck with him are gonna fuck with him regardless. Yeah, I love Joe. I just wish he put out more music. Me too. Yeah, and the thing too. is, like, the song with Coda, it's cool, but, like, I want more, you know? Yeah. That's the thing. It just felt like, especially with that feature, it was it was cool. It was Joey saying, hey, I'm still here. I can still rap better than your favorite rapper, but you don't have to wait for the real thing, you know? Yeah. That's I, what yeah. I felt like I, I, the whole time I was listening to the Coda album, I thought I, I would have liked Joey on these beats. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and – and like no just like obviously Coda's no, no cool. disrespect I fu- to him, yeah. but I fuck with Coda. Like I think he's got great energy. He's got the right mindset and everything. But I do agree, like he he just like lyrically it was just nothing. Like no. it it really was just him just kind of flowing on everything, and that's fine, but like especially when I'm hearing like low fi beats and like really funky beats that are sort of out there for some people. Um, I wanna hear something that's gonna pop out. And what pops out on those beats is lyricism. And, and Joey would one pun. I mean, not one yeah. pun, but like one double on, one punchline on the entire tape. He had one punchline. He also was incredible on West Side Gun, Pray for Paris. Like oh, he, he was great verse. Oh, yeah, Joey. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know I. I love what? Joey with Chloe and Haley. Like that one song he did. With I. That- I remember that one. I don't know what the name of it is, but I do remember that. It was like, I'll tell you right now, it's like one of my favorites. Chloe in the Swamp. Wait, what? Oh, no. Chloe Chloe in the Swamp. (laughs) Swamp Monsters. I'll go Joey Chloe the Swamp Monsters. Shrek 2 nonsense. (laughs) What's it called? Happy Without Me. Happy Without Me. I'll play it. By Chloe in the Swamp. Do you want me to play a little right now? Yeah. Will we give the people a taste. Will we get copyrighted? I can just edit it out or something. I don't know. <laughs> I think if you play a little, you won't. Yeah. Well, this sounds nice. I remember we were on the bitch town. Secrets when we look up, it'd be where did the time go? Ooh. You're talented. This is fire. Wait, now I'm going to go to the Joey part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, like, Joseph. The thing with Joey is when he flows on a beat, he still gives you, like, that aggressive, like, delivery. Where, like, even if he may not be saying something, like, super, like, wild, it's still going to come off, like, just, uh, you know what I mean? Hmm. I feel like, I don't know, I just, I want to bash Coda because I do think that, Again, the everything everything tape is cool. It's just I can't get over how I thought it was just gonna be a lot more. I saw. So I'm I, like, more. as someone that listens to Coda a little bit, I wouldn't consider myself a super fan, but I've listened to his other tapes. But lyricism is his big thing. Yeah. And I didn't feel like he brought his best bars. So I, I don't know. Maybe maybe he just, you know. If it's a middle ground thing, yeah, sure. I don't mind. Like that's the thing. Like I'd rather see him progress out of this i think part of it too is that like the beats were a bit more trappier than usual i don't Mm, know if that that kind of like made him misstep a bit or what but Mm. i just hope going forward whatever he does is dope you know what i mean because i think he's one like i think indie artists do deserve their right spot in this industry and i feel Mm. like coda um he has good energy, great sound, super original, and people love him. You know what I mean? I think that's oh, one of the biggest things. Coda. That's a big thing that, like, differentiates him from a lot of other artists. I do feel like it's just that, like, he really is just everybody's friend. He's just a good vibe across the board. He's good friend. The friend. <laughs> He's the friend for a reason. Yeah, you know what I mean? He's called the friend He's just a cool reason. dude. Like, that's why, like, I Coda don't – I feel – that's why I feel so bad, like, saying something negative about this album because like it is really a good vibe but, but listen it's it's doing well yeah it's and doing, i think that's awesome honestly, yeah. he's he's 
he's getting trashed. And that's why, like what Mark said before, like this would be the best time for Joey to, to strike. If Code of the Friend yeah. is making waves <laughs> right now and people are yeah. listening that wouldn't have listened, Joey, like now, now, yeah. now, now, yeah. now yeah. is like, the time. Press the button. Yeah, like do it. Like, I, I need so. it. Something that like an album is coming soon. What's up? Yeah, he said he said something the other day. He said he was working on something, right? He was he was tweeting like a madman. You guys kidding me? <laughs> oh, oh my god, yeah, it was, was great. He was sauced. Yeah, he was he so was fucked up. Yeah, it was great. I loved every second of it. He was like, "Oh, I'm hard right now. Like I can't believe yeah, this yeah. about to drop. Like <laughs> yeah. it was crazy. Like he was in his bag. It was mad funny. And like." <laughs> I like when when I see Joey going into his OG Swank bag, I'm like, all right, like y'all niggas don't know OG Swank, you know what I mean? So like, that's yeah. how I knew he was doing something crazy. Like he going back into that bag, he about to go do something crazy. I can't wait yeah. for it. Now I'm yeah, mad excited for this Joey. Josie of Badman, I mean, no, come on, this is I'm very excited. This is the, the track record has been great, and I I'm one of the, I always think time away is a good thing in music. Oh, yeah, More, definitely. Nine times out of ten, if an artist is taking this long with an album, it's going to be something special. Um, it makes me you think about it. Be, you'd rather be wanted and mysterious than oversaturated and just, like, passive. Exactly. You know, like, yeah, mm -hmm. You'd rather want people asking, where is it, where is it, where is it? Motherfucking ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, like Frank, like Cardi, like Uzi. Like, I, like yeah, Uzi oh. staying away helped. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because I think if he dropped or whatever that album was just regularly, I don't think it would have done the number. Like, obviously, it would have done really well, but I don't think it would have been, like, a smash hit like it was. Yeah. Mystery is a good thing in music. I said it. Because oh, yeah. it ends up becoming a meme. And the meme... Back better than ever. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. But, yeah, no, it's... um. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I've always said the mystery thing is great though. That's like one of those things. It's like I think you should consistently like in the beginning drop, and then after like the first you know like tape or like major release, you you fall back yeah. a little bit, or like you mm -hmm. yeah. It, and it it kind of depends on the kind of artist you are too, mm -hmm. to some degree. Like if you're making real introspective sp stuff, then you definitely gonna live a lot off of that, but. I feel like to a degree, if you're kind of more of a pop artist who may not be like the most talented rapper ever, oh boy, kind of need to be a bit more consistent. Like a, as much as I hate, like a the baby, like he's got to keep dropping regularly. I think because people yeah. will forget about him because yeah, it'll exactly. be another the baby though fill in the, the, the space. If for lack of better terms, yeah. But like I keep saying, I mean, I said this morning, I'm like, he's got another hit. Oh yeah. yeah, like this like, rock star song's a hit. So is that the one with Roddy Rich? With Roddy Rich. Okay, yeah. that makes a lot yeah. more sense. Okay, because I do remember. I think I like that song off of the tape out of all of them. Um, oh, yeah. The baby's still gonna be around for a while, whether we like it or not. But yeah, the last album I'm pretty sure sucked like really bad. It wasn't great. It, I didn't enjoy it. It, it felt yeah, rushed. It was, just, it, it was just like a. Like flimsy. That's what it kind of felt like to me. It just felt like real manufactured. Just we need to get this out for the quarantine. Like I need to put a Kobe bar in there. Like it, it <laughs> didn't feel like it was authentic. or the quarantine. Yeah, exactly. And it, it felt like they were fishing for a hit, honestly. Yeah, and I don't think he, he got one. And that's good. He got one though. That's yeah. the thing. He did get it. So yeah. that's why I'm like, yeah, it worked. You know. Exactly. That's really what he wants out of it. And like, yeah. my dad used to always tell me like. All you need is one song to stick around. And that's very true. So mm -hmm. I think the baby is holding on for dear life. But let's just hope he can. <laughs> the thing is, is, when he tries something different, it's awful. But when he sticks to the same, it sounds exactly what the fuck is saying. Like, but it's where do, fire, where do, though. Where, <laughs> where the, thing. Do you go, the thing is, where do you go from there? Like, Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we're doing the same thing, term, but people but... are going to people are going to leave but if you switch it up people are going to leave so <laughs> i feel like he's he's in a super unique situation compared to a lot of different artists yeah but like when he showed up on the on the dreamville album he murdered that song and that was not a the baby type song yeah but it was you know what i'm like, saying like it was still it was the baby pocket, verse though yeah, no the, po the pocket the pocket was there but the instrumental was definitely not that classic to baby sound it was, it was a cool. cold beat cool, cool. you know it, it made, sounded like a cold song so it was yeah. like so to me i just think it's it's gonna come down to his choices in instrumentation going forward 
the like samples um, and what he can do after this. Because I think he could do the flow. Like, yeah. I think you could keep the flow where it is. Cause it's, just like Quavo. It's just, yeah. And it's like also Quavo a flow that. the same shit. Like, it's still yeah. hot. <laughs> yeah. I, I think with the flow, too, it's just like, it's so catchy mm-hmm. and catches your ear that he could keep it. It's just, I think it's going to come down to his, his beats, where yeah. he goes from here with the beats. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah. Yeah, the baby. The baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the baby, that's my baby. Yeah, <laughs> that boy is great. Um, all right, before we head out of here, y'all, y'all want to speak on this Jordan documentary real quick? Oh, oh! So I, think, I think we may have an actual resident uh, NBA insider now. Why? Oh, what, baby? <laughs> on this podcast, <laughs> Vinny Woj. Yeah, Vinny Woj. I yeah. haven't seen it. Our cat's tapping out. Oh no! Oh, I didn't uh... know. It's 10 hours of, of great, great 10 stuff. hours? I got time. Don't worry. Yeah, and the sex to do. Our episode. Our long episodes, too. Yeah. It's great TV. Um, if I got through Tiger King, I can get through this. Yeah, and it's yeah. definitely better than Tiger King. I'll give you that much. Yeah. Um, it is. It definitely yeah. is. I've never seen yeah. Tiger King, but I can tell you for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I missed out on Tiger King, too. Yeah. I'll tell you where this does better than Tiger King is that is that my issue with the Tiger King was that it came out all at once. So then you had that weekend and that week, and then another thing came out the next week and it just totally washed it away. Whereas the Jordan doc was five weeks. So it became like an event. It was like, Oh, Sunday night, the Jordan docs on, we're going to watch the Jordan. Like it became an event for everybody. And that I think ends up helping make your brand last longer it's just like the that's why i think the binging is just the worst i'm like so mm-hmm. against binging on tv i think i think every show should be weekly i am the number one binger in all of america i finished tiger king i'm not joking in a day how long is tiger king seven fucking hours oh, fucking God, <laughs> i finished game of thrones in like three weeks <laughs> that's concerning that's fucked up <laughs> game. i don't know why you do that i finished game seven in one day i'm not joking Mark, didn't you say what did you say the other day about you're like you couldn't pay me to rewatch Game of Thrones? <laughs> uh, <laughs> could not. You could Mark say watch like, Game of Thrones or lose a foot. I'm saying take the right one. I'm not watching. <laughs> <laughs> also, oh. I've never seen a show fumble an ending so badly. No, that they show fumbled. fumbled the bag, but like it was fucking fire. That show fumbled the bag for me six episodes in. I was like, I was, I was like, I'm good. good after I, don't, I, don't need to see this. Like, I don't need to see this. I was like, Vinny saw the just, incest. Was like, I'm good. Yeah. I was like, ah. Uh, <laughs> nah. Yeah, for me, I just could never get into the night shit. You know what I mean? Like, all that medieval <laughs> shit fucks me up because, like, there's never any black people in it. But then when you tell a Game of Thrones fan that, they go, oh, but there's the slaves, bro. They're badass. Yeah, they're so what? cool. Oh. What? My nigga, you think I'm trying to watch more a fantasy world where we're slaves? Not even a real world. Like, right, it's, it's, an, it's an alternative universe. We can't <laughs> even get free. Yeah, it's like, that's what I'm saying. Like, we still got to fight for it in there? Like, in 1200 uh, yeah. BC? Shit. <laughs> it's not a great that's love. different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, Jordan Doc uh, is great. Uh, Dennis Rodman, yeah. I think, is the star of the show. Amazing. Don't the whole thing. Guys, Amazing. how do you think Dennis was feeling during the all the King Kim Jong Un like dead rumors? He was definitely bugging the fuck out. There's no way. I think he was ready to give a heart. <laughs> he was. He definitely was. Like he was probably yeah. looking around for donors. Need like, a heart donor. You don't need that. <laughs> give me it. You're not. You're not Kim Jong Un. Like, like when you see him on the show, that you're like, this is a real level guy. Like this is a really good guy. Like you see Dennis <laughs> Robin and you see Dennis Robin, and you're like. Oh, like he's he's a really nice guy. Like he's just misunderstood by a lot of people. Oh, I yeah. think. I, like he just did his thing, but he always got the job done, no matter what. <laughs> Listen, I mean, he did go. Uh, where is it at the end? He goes uh, to the <laughs> WWE. He went to the Bro, WWE. In the middle of the, the NBA night. finals. Yeah, middle of the NBA finals. <laughs> Who the does last that? Year they're all playing together. <laughs> <laughs> just yo, guys. I need a few days. I'll, I'll be. Yeah. He didn't even tell nobody. He was just <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imagine being <laughs> Phil Phil Jackson in the hotel room, just like, oh, you know, uh, I'm going to go sit down and, uh, you know, just uh, get a pizza to the room of the poison pizza. And then, uh, you know, and uh, 
I'm just going to take a load off. Yeah, we got a big day tomorrow. And then Dennis Rodman has a chair and he's hitting people <laughs> over the back. And it's just like, <laughs> what? Like, yeah, it's, and it's like with Hulk Hogan, hey, brother. So, it's, yeah. yeah, it's just, it's wild. And I but think the. Wild. Phil Jackson's another big winner in this whole thing too. I think I think oh, yeah. I've never realized how much of a fucking hippie this guy is. Yeah. And I absolutely <laughs> love it. I Bro, love how I love I mean the relationship between him and Ramen alone is just like one of the I think it's the greatest relationship in sports history. Like just having <laughs> a guy this talented, so misunderstood, and just this quirky ass coach who's just weird enough to understand him, but still like good enough to keep everybody in the all his eggs in one basket. And Rodman just leaves when he wants, and he's yeah. just like, "Yeah, we've done this five times already. I, we're good." Like, yeah, no, well, we no need a six yeah. champion. <laughs> yeah. Dude, he Phil Jackson had them meditating at practice. Like, he would meditate. <laughs> had them doing some crazy like Native American shit. Like, yeah, he probably had like ayahuasca, low key, just like being passed around. You know, people find their spirit animal and shit. Like, that's yeah. real it's shit. Amazing documentary, top to bottom. Was yes, just, like it's awesome incredible tv and now that they're doing like this i know you love the patriots now but yeah this tom brady one just seems so premature because like yeah. i think what made the the jordan doc so good is that so much time had passed yeah so like there was like a, a lot to digest that happened afterwards and things that could you know that's why exactly yeah, but. i think it's definitely too soon for the brady thing i think they're talking about it releasing next year no nah, mm. we can wait on that just because like He's still playing. He's still, he's playing. still playing. Like he's still, <laughs> he still proving. Like, he's literally on it. Like for all intents and purposes, he's, he's literally on a prove it deal right now to prove that he's actually a good QB yeah. and he's not a quote unquote system quarterback. But I do think that yeah. his story, when it does get told, people are gonna look at him differently because like he was still like one of the last quarterbacks picked in his class to the NFL. Um, he wasn't really seen as a star ever, even though he was low key balling the fuck out. So I'm interested to see if, like, maybe a coach, just like in the same way Bob Knight said about Jordan in college, like he was the best basketball player he had ever seen. Yeah. I wonder if there's going to be similarities in that when he was younger, you know? Listen, I had, like, yeah, I – there's just – like, that documentary was also just so um, – like, you guys saw with me. Like, I would be texting in the group chat with you guys and being like, did this happen? Like, this went on, like, what? Yeah, like, this yeah. is like, you know, so, like, that's why, like, to me, I was like, I missed out on so many years of great stuff. So, that's why I'm like, all right, like, as last year, after we all know, when I claimed uh, the Brooklyn Nets <laughs> after the finals last year, um, and I didn't watch the season, um, but now I'm, like, to I'm in. I'm yeah. totally in, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, and the playoffs start in, Ju in June, July, and they're going to all – they're. They're in Disney, so they get shout out to the Walt Disney Company. Yeah, and um, yeah, I mean, I'm in. Like, and it's gonna be, you know, make or break games. So I'm, I'm definitely excited to start watching. Yeah, when the NBA does come back, it's, it's gonna be fucking gonna awesome. Be great. Especially since, like, for Mark and I, especially, like, both of our teams are looking real yeah. good right now, and it looks like we're on a crash course for the finals. Hopefully, so I, I hope, hope so. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, is, it, think, is it my team looking good too? I mean, you need to tell me. I haven't. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the thing with the Nets is just that Kevin Durant's still hurt, and yeah, Kyrie is refusing to play. Yeah, he, he, Kyrie Irving is literally just the biggest wild card I think in sports history. Um, yeah. He goes into these depressive like episodes, and then like he thinks everybody's against them, and then he also yeah. just like he'll just say the weirdest things in press conferences sometimes and throw his teammates under the bus. Like he's a lot to deal with. And I think Brooklyn is just now starting to realize why Boston was so quick to got, get rid of him. And yeah. I, I think the right move for the Nets is to trade him, work with KD. <laughs> you can get somebody nasty out of him. That's the thing. Like a team is dumb enough to fall for that. So yeah, wasn't Kyrie the one that he was DMing fans, like getting in the fights. That was KD. That was KD. That was KD. Who is the sniper one on Instagram? That's Kevin Durant. That's Kevin Durant. <laughs> okay. He was the one that was okay. – Kevin Durant yeah. was making burner accounts like – Yep. Like, gassing himself like, up. Gassing himself up and shitting on people on the internet. And Kyrie Irving is just <laughs> like – Kyrie Irving was screaming that the earth, the earth was flat for four years. So, I he was a flat earther. Yeah, he was a flat earther. So, like, he's one of those guys. And that, like, oh, he's super spacey, like, into Native American stuff. But, like – in the, not like in the cool Phil Jackson way, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not, <laughs> so, um, 
I think and he most- also hates black women, so. No, no, not a fan. Yeah, not a huge fan of him. And at the most is telling- that just like a theory or is that set? Is that um, out there? So when they won the NBA finals, he was on a cruise and he said, like he was on a, a yacht, I should say. And he's like, no black women allowed. <laughs> He's like white women. Oh only. my so, god! Yeah. Him and Doja Cat would be. They'd be best buds. <laughs> yeah, match made true. in heaven. <laughs> Harley Quinn and the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. That's an absolute oh, fact. You, Tom, did you hear the story? I think this came out Kyrie's last year, but like they were sitting in in film, and, and Brad Stevens was trying to teach the team to play teach the team a play and he stopped the meeting and said hey what do you guys think about god do you believe in him that seems like what are you doing this is practice. <laughs> and that that's the bullshit that you get with Kyrie irving he's just gonna do dumb shit like that because like, <laughs> he thinks he thinks he's plato or some shit like he does right like, like, he thinks he, he's he, a lot smart like he went to duke for a semester he's like yeah i'm a genius yeah exactly it's oh. not that simple bro like it really isn't i mean oh. it, again if that's him that's him but I know if I was playing basketball, I don't give a fuck what you think about that shit. I'm trying to win oh, a game. Man. Like, I know, I know Kyrie has some hot takes on Corona, man. I, I, I'm glad they kept him away from the <laughs> Yeah, you know he does. His PR team is working close. You, you, know, <laughs> you, know he, you know he doesn't like Fauci. Yeah, definitely mm-hmm. not. Yeah, thinks he's a cold-blooded <laughs> liar. Does not believe in that. It's not one bit. Uh, Kyrie Irving. Oh. Yeah, NBA uh, talk with us. Pod. Yeah, I think it's what about time to wrap this thing up here. Yeah, We're going for like yeah. two hours. So, 